Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku had a twin sister part 1. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 2 comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist. The author of the story Angel Xoxo 8 from Fan Fiction. So let's start the video. The sun shined at his school, a little boy whimpering. He looked terrified as tears were in his eyes. A little girl with the same dark green hair color as him shook while standing behind him. Why are you being so mean? The little boy asked as they stood near another boy. He held his arm as he was crying, and the little girl was too. You're making him cry, Kakin. If you keep on hurting him, uh. He stood confidently with his fists clenched. I'll, uh, I'll stop you myself. I'll leave. Leave us alone, the little girl said quietly while shaking. The boy immediately tensed up from her voice, his look now a little more determined. Kakin was a little blonde boy surrounded by two others. He then let out a scoff with a confident smirk on his face. HMPH. You want to pretend to be a hero. One boy revealed red wings, and the other revealed that his hand could stretch out. Kakin slammed his fist against his hand, a spark of flames coming from it. You don't stand a chance without a quirk, Deku. He smirked and the green-haired boy gasped, stepping backwards a bit. He held out a hand in front of the girl as she followed his movements. She squeezed her eyes shut as the three charged in, the sun shining again. A bit later, the boy that was a victim and the girl were looking over the one who tried to help them. Both of them were crying out to him. Here's the sad truth. All men are not created equal. That day I couldn't believe that I couldn't help him. And he has to suffer because of me. The little boy was worn out, laying on his back while looking up to the sky tiredly. The boys had bullied him mercilessly before leaving him there to suffer. When we were four years old, we learned that some kids have more power than others. Unfortunately for me, I learned that fact in more ways than one. Footsteps rapidly ran over a puddle. The green-haired boy, now older, was dragging the girl, also older, along with him. She didn't look comfortable with him doing so. She tried to keep up with him as he held her hand, the other hand holding her backpack by the strap. But that won't hold me back. The boy panted with a big smile on his face as they both ran as fast as they could. This hasn't changed the fact that some things couldn't be changed for me. The girl had her eyes squeezed shut. If anything, it pushes me to do better. Not just for me, but for my sister too. Izuka Midoriya, his fraternal twin sister, was just barely five feet tall. She had dark green hair like her brother, which stopped at her thighs, but it was very thick. Although her hair was more straight than fluffy like her brother's, it faded into black at her bangs and there was also a splotch of black near the middle of her head. Her forelocks were curled and big as they framed her face, stopping at her chin. Part of her hair was tied into rings above her head tied with yellow ribbons, the rest of it being down. She had a round face, green irises like her brother, and also freckles. They were symmetrical, but they formed into a star shape so she had five instead of four. She also had on a black school uniform just like his. My brother might be optimistic, but for me, that's just not something I can do. Ayizuku, slow down. She cried out to him in a small whine and he looked over his shoulder. I would if I wasn't asked by our teachers to make sure you get to school on time. He gave her a sheepish smile. I know you don't like them, but you can't keep avoiding the crowds at school forever and be late to class. Why not? She murmured meekly while looking away. It wasn't because she hated her classmates or school to be late every single day. It was just that. She really didn't like crowds. Growing up, she was always very shy. And always spoke so quiet she'd be mistaken for a small animal. She was afraid of being around too many people because she wasn't as talkative as her brother. Therefore, she tended to arrive at school when the crowds were almost non-existent. Just the thought of people looking at her right now was making her want to turn right back around and skip school altogether. Talking to them too just made her very anxious because she felt like she could always say the wrong thing or offend them. She frowned a bit while holding her backpack in front of her skirt, looking at her brother hopping up and down. Izuka then let out a small breath of unease. She had no idea how she was gonna get through this today. Don't worry, Izuka. Her brother smiled optimistically at her. I know you can get through it. MMM. She fiddled with her backpack nervously and not responding to this at first. What if they all look at me? Then I'd have to. Talk to them. Would you really have to do that? He looked away a bit awkwardly before patting her back. But I'll make sure nothing bad happens, I promise. She didn't respond and clutched her backpack, a shadow over her eyes. Maybe he's right. They were given the signal to walk. And Izuka dragged his sister along. Cherry blossom petals fell and Izuku gave a beaming smile. Izuka still looked hesitant before a large man let out a roar. And they came to a stop. The boy gasped sharply as the two looked up. The man was as tall as a building, standing onto a train station. He had a black vest, jeans and his face looked like a shark. Izuka's hair stood on end from the amount of people around and hid behind her brother, peeking over his shoulder. Izuku didn't mind this at all, as he was used to her hiding behind him. 
That's one huge supervillain. He exclaimed and pointed up ahead. Izuka, look. A light then shined at night in the middle of a hospital. The first incident was in Kinkwig City. It was something no one could comprehend. A giggling baby was surrounded by light. An extraordinary child was born who radiated light. The baby's father shouted in shock while shaking, watching from the window outside. After that, reports of people with superpowers popped up across the globe. No one knew what was causing these quirks. Left and right, it was becoming second nature in the world. And yet there still wasn't any real explanation. Before long, the supernatural became the totally normal. Dreams a reality. The sun shined near the earth while one cloaked hero stepped up. The world became a superhuman society, with about 80% of the population possessing some uncanny ability. You name it, telepathy, super speed, super strength. Even some of the most unique ones were seen as a quirk in some way. Our streets looked like scenes from comic books. As cities swirled with chaos and confusion, a new profession dominated our collective consciousness. And pretty soon, with these quirks, there was suddenly a way to combat all of the chaos thanks to this new profession. Nothing would ever be the same again. The villain let out a roar and then smashed a tower. Everyone gasped in horror as it started to fall towards the ground. It was an age of heroes. That's right, superheroes. Things that weren't thought to be reality until now. A man charged over and slid to a stop. He punched his fists and then held up his arms to stop the structure from falling. Oh, nice. A bystander smiled from the crowd. Way to go, death arms. The punching hero. I wish I had a quirk that made me super strong. The superhero had an intense look on his face. A police officer trying to protect the crowd gasped, seeing some water manipulated right in front of him. It formed into a barrier of sorts as they looked to see another hero. Everyone, please stay back. This area is far too dangerous. Well, the rescue specialist, Backdraft is here. He'll make sure we're okay. Another bystander cried out. Izuku tried to peek past the crowd in front of him. Izuku was shaking immensely behind him, grasping her skirt nervously. This guy must be pretty desperate to go full monster in the middle of the city. A man spoke up, getting the attention of the boy. Do you know what happened? Just some amateur, another man turned to him, stole someone's bag, and then got himself cornered. A quirk like that, and he's just a petty thief. Izuku slipped past them and his sister flinched in alarm. I Izuku, wait. There's too many of them. She waved a shaking hand, watching him slip into the crowd. She gave a terrified sound while looking around, wondering if she would have the courage to go get him or if she should stay behind safe and sound. And her mind was telling her the latter. Why? She murmured while shaking nervously, hoping no one would notice her. I got held up. Trains out. Another villain. A man spoke into the phone. I'm not sure when I'm gonna make it into the office. Someone then jumped over him and he looked up to see another hero. A few fangirls squealed, alarming some of the men surrounding them. It's Kamui. We're your biggest fans. They cried out as someone made out of wood landed in front of them. He then jumped and landed on a stoplight. He leaped again and landed on the roof, jumping once the villain had tried to reach out to him. But instead, he destroyed the part the hero was standing on. Kamui looked down at him while still in the air. Get away from me or I'll break you, toothpick. He screamed up at the hero. Izuku had managed to get to the front, gasping in excitement. This is gonna be good. The villain swung his arm, but the hero used his arm to extend it onto another structure. He then let go as he spun around. It's Kamui Woods. The hero looked up in determination towards the villain. He may be new, but he's making a big name for himself. The boy gushed at the action in front of him. One look at that dopey grin and I know what you are. A bystander smiled knowingly with his arms crossed. A fanboy. Uh, sorta. Izuku answered meekly at this, looking away awkwardly. Kamui raced onto the tracks and jumped up, the villain trying to squash him. He then leaped onto the villain's arm and leapt forward, extending his arm into wooden rope again. It caught the wrist and he flew backwards, the villain growling at him. He threw his arm around to get the hero off, and he eventually released the villain, flying towards a structure. He used his hand and legs to slide to a stop. He then looked up towards the opponent. Assault, robbery, and the illegal use of powers during rush hour traffic. He then spoke up once the smoke cleared. You are the incarnation of evil. He moved his arm in front of him, and it turned bigger, forming into branches. There, Izuku smiled while pointing upwards. His special move. Come on, tree man, show us something flashy. The bystander called out next to him. The preemptive. Izuku started off in excitement. Binding. Lacquered chain prison. Kamui and Izuku stated in unison as the arm released itself into a bunch of wooden limbs. The villain held up his arm to block it off. Canyon Cannon. A woman jumped in from above, kicking him in the face as she was about 50 feet tall. Everyone, including the heroes, were very shocked by this. And now Kamui looked kinda ridiculous because all he had to show for his effort was his arm. Being a big tree almost. He gave a shocked sound as the villain was laying on the streets. The female superhero landed a few feet away and showed the crowd her butt. 
Money shot, money shot, money shot. A group of fanboys immediately snapped pictures with their cameras. Piece of cake for the world's next hottest hero. She bragged while smiling and looking over her shoulder. Hi there, everyone, I'm Mount Lady. And you don't have to worry about this bum anymore. Though it was hard to tell if she meant her butt or the villain she just defeated. Money shot, money shot, money hot. They continued taking photos. The bystander next to Izuku himself was blushing admiring the woman. Izuku dug into his backpack for something as people cheered for Mount Lady. Wait, she's getting all the credit? Kamui asked in disbelief as she waved her arms to the crowd. With the rise of superpowers came an explosive increase in criminal activity. I suppose that's to be expected when you have a bunch of quirks coming in out of nowhere. Mount Lady shrunk down back to normal size, while governments were stuck trying to figure out how to reform laws with quirks in mind. Courageous people started performing heroic acts to keep our city safe. This meant that people without quirks or couldn't use them to fight didn't have to worry anymore, because these noble people could give them a sense of peace of mind. The villain was then tied up while Mount Lady was giving an interview. The other heroes that stepped up, besides Kamui, didn't seem to mind too much about this, protecting us against villains who abused their powers for evil. With overwhelming public support, heroes found an official place as peacekeepers, overseen by the government. Of course, just like regular people would, they still had rules and regulations to follow of their own. Even heroes have their limits. Mount Lady smiled to the crowd happily. Those who performed the best were paid the most and got all the fame and glory. Their careers depended on their ability to stay in the spotlight. Without these quirks of theirs, they'd be out of work and no one would be left to save us, the innocent people of this world. If you don't have recognition, then it's not as easy to gain progress. Although Mount Lady looked a little too happy to get the glory right about now. After all of the chaos, Izuku was standing in front of the crater made by the villain. He was holding a notebook as well. Gigantification, huh? He muttered to himself while taking notes. Well, she's definitely got the looks and attitude to be a crowd favorite. And her quirk is really showy. But it'll be kinda hard for her to get around much in the city without damaging lots of things. That means, she might not be very useful. What's that, fanboy? The bystander pointed at him in utter confusion. You tackin' notes over there. Wanna be a hero too, huh? Izuku glanced back in alarm and then beamed at the question. Yes. He gave a big smile at the man. More than anything. It was his dream, in fact. He had wanted to be a hero ever since he and Izuku were kids. Oh. The boy gasped in realization that he had left his sister behind alone. Izuka. He turned around and ran to where they were before to see his sister trembling and hiding behind a corner. I'm sorry I left you behind. He stopped nearby while examining her. Are you okay? You didn't get hurt or anything, did you? Yes, but don't do that again. She whined at him and he rubbed the back of his neck. I really am sorry. Come on, we gotta go. She turned right around in the direction they had just come from schools that way. He reminded her knowingly with a sheepish expression while pointing in the opposite direction. She then froze in fear with wide eyes once he told her this. People really want you to start coming on time, remember? Mom's not gonna be happy if you're late again today. She hung her head in dismay and silently followed after him. She clutched the back of his uniform as he guided her, a frown on her face. She was grateful he was a bit taller than her so that she wouldn't be too noticeable. They thankfully managed to make it on time to Aldera Junior High. So, as third-year students, it's time to start thinking seriously about your futures and what you want to do with your lives. Izuku was writing something while Izuka was sketching. She was hiding her face into her desk as well. I could pass out some career aptitude tests, but, why bother? The teacher confidently grabbed the papers. Everyone in class showed that they had a quirk. He laughed while throwing up the papers into the air. I know you all want to go to the hero track. Everyone cheered as a bunch of students were showing their quirks. The only exceptions were three people, the twins and some blonde boy sitting not too far away from them. Yes, yes, you've got some very impressive quirks, but no power usage allowed in school. Izuku had his hand raised near the back of the class. Get a hold of yourselves. Hey, teach. Someone called out as it was almost 9am. Don't lump me in with this bunch of losers. Izuku glanced up at him, looking very unhappy while staring at his classmate. I'm the real deal, but these guys will be lucky to end up as sidekicks to some busted D-lister. He had his feet planted on the desk, leaning back in his chair and looking up towards the ceiling. Heh. His name was Katsuki Bakugo, someone that the twins were familiar with. Fortunately and unfortunately in most cases, you think you're better than us, Katsuki. The class was in an uproar after he said this. Let's go, I'll take you all on. He challenged the class without any care in the world. Ha, huh? the teacher looked at the results from his clipboard. You've got impressive test results. Maybe you will get into UA High. He's gonna try for the national school. A student wondered as everyone was in shock except Izuka. She just kept her head down so she wouldn't have to think on it too hard. 
and she looked at her sketch. It was a drawing of cherry blossom trees, like the ones at school or the ones that the twins were at when they saw the hero villain fight. Well, Izuku did. His sister couldn't really get the courage to look at the crowd to see anything. That school has a 2% acceptance rate. Izuku groaned while placing a hand on his head, hiding into his desk now. It's impossible to get into. That's exactly why it's the only place worthy of me, Katsuki bragged to the class. He then flipped to land on his desk, grinning while clenching a fist. I aced all of the mock tests. I'm the only one at this school who stands a chance at getting in. I'll end up more popular than All Might himself, and be the richest hero of all time. He had a manic grin on his face clenching his fist and then raising it to the ceiling. People all across the world will know who I am. And it all starts with Yue High. Oh yeah, Midoriya's, don't you wanna go to Yue, too? The teacher wondered and Izuku's pencil snapped upon hearing this, flinching. Izuku gave a nervous grunt while Katsuki had frozen in place. The female green-haired student had wide eyes as sweat drops fell down from her head immensely, still looking at her desk. Not only because she didn't want the attention, but because she didn't really want to go to Yue unlike her brother or Katsuki. She didn't even know how her name got involved in all this when she never even turned in any paperwork in the first place. Izuku looked up to see everyone staring at him, a sweat drop at the back of his head. It was total silence before everyone started laughing at them, except for Katsuki. Midoriya's. You're kidding, right? One of them called out in laughter, Izuka gripping the top of her head with one hand. The other was gripping her broken pencil in embarrassment. There's no way either of you getting into the hero course without a quirk. Izuku stood up in defense as Izuka glanced up at him from his left. Well, actually they got rid of that rule, he tried to explain himself. I could be the first one. Katsuki growled and charged forward. He used his hand to create an explosion, destroying Izuku's desk in the process. Izuku landed on the ground, his sister gasping sharply. She stood up and kneeled next to him in concern. Listen up, Deku. The boy looked up in alarm as Izuka had her back towards Katsuki, a deep frown on her face. Smoke came from his hands as his eyes were angry and white. You and your mousy sister are even worse than the rest of these damn rejects, you quirkless wannabes. You really think they'd let people like you in when they could have me? Izuka gritted her teeth from his words. Out of everyone who mocked and looked down on them, Katsuki was definitely the worst. Every day, he'd bully them for not having quirks, and didn't think much of either of them. He was also the second reason why Izuka tended to be late for school, so that she wouldn't have to be around him much. Huh, no, wait, you've got it all wrong. Izuku yelped up at him in fear. Really, I'm not trying to compete against you. He moved all the way backwards to the wall. You gotta believe me. He then looked at the ground, shaking. It's just that. I've wanted to be a hero since I was little. I may not have a quirk, but I can still try my hardest, can't I? He looked up nervously and Izuka stared at him, her eyes softening. Jay just, stop it, Bekugo san W we don't want, any trouble. She stammered nervously while clutching at her skirt. He growled from her trying to tell him what to do, and from Izuku even attempting to apply when it was clear who was the best. You shut your damn mouth, mousy, not that anyone could hear it. You'd never be able to hang with the best of the best. Smoke came from his hands, and suddenly everyone was in dark shadow with red eyes, looking down at the twins. You'd die in the exams. Defenseless Izuku and Mousy. This school's already crappy. You really want to embarrass it more by failing so hard. Izuku frowned as everyone except his sister kept laughing. Izuku clenched a fist in front of her chest from their laughter. She really wished there was more she could do to help her brother. If she was more assertive, that is, someone elsewhere let out a scream. A store owner ran outside as a woman was on the ground, a shield around her. Hey, get back here. Someone stopped that monster. A monster made out of sludge was roaming around in the city. He had just robbed the store. Yell all you want, sucker, this cash is mine. He went past a pole, dropping a bill as everyone stared. Dude, where are all the heroes? Weird. Normally someone would swoop in right away. A customer stepped out of the store right behind them. Maybe they're all still busy from that scene this morning. The customer, with messy hair, flinched and looked up in alarm. The sludge monster had cash stuck to his back moving along the buildings. Remember when we didn't have to worry about randos with quirks all the time? Seriously. There's no stopping M. The customer behind them suddenly grew in size and in muscles. Yes, there is. The three men all flinched and turned around. They all gasped in realization of who he was. He then stepped forward out of the shadows and into the sunlight. You know why. The sludge villain glanced backwards, and suddenly he grew terrified of the sight. The man gave a big grin. I am here. Soon, classes were over as everyone started to head home. Oh yeah, we should go karaoke tonight. A female student commented to another. Yeah, let's go. Izuku and Izuka were staying behind for the time being. Mainly because Izuka didn't like the amount of people trying to get out in a crowd. Because it was too much for her. So she tended to wait until the chaos of trying to leave died down. And Izuku usually waited with her so she wouldn't have to go home alone. 
Man, he scrolled through his phone. That fight from this morning is all over the news. Better write some notes down before I forget anything. He smiled while holding his notebook full of stats on pro heroes. If that helps you pass the time, I won't stop you, his sister replied while starting out on a rough sketch. He stared at her and gave a small frown. You know, sis, he spoke up, getting her attention. You could just tell people the truth. She sat there in silence as, contrary to popular belief, she did actually have a quirk. The only person who knew about it in school was her brother. And the only reason why he knew was because she only trusted her family to learn about it. But anywhere else, she just didn't feel the need to prove that she had one, or use it. Because she hated having one to begin with, when her brother didn't. And why should I do that? She questioned without looking back at him, a shadow over her eyes. You already know I wouldn't do that to you, Izuku. So just stop trying, okay? But this shouldn't be about me. He gritted his teeth and clenched a fist. That's why I signed you in the first place. He looked towards the ground as she didn't respond to this. Izuka, I know you're worried. But suddenly his notebook and her sketchbook were snatched up by Katsuki himself. He stared down at them in a sneer, glaring especially at Izuka. She blinked at his intense gaze on her, biting her lip and looking towards her desk with that same shadow over her eyes. She had no idea if he had just heard their conversation or not, because if he did, it was gonna make things even worse for the twins. I don't know what you think you or your wimpy sister are doing, Deku. He started off with a small growl. But we're not done. What you got? One of his lackeys walked over to the trio. Their diaries. Izuku gave a nervous sound as Katsuki held it up higher. Izuku stood up quick, but he held out his other hand to her, threatening to blast her if she even tried. The girl flinched with terrified wide eyes staring at him. She then slowly sat down in defeat, because he was definitely the most powerful one in school, and she didn't want him to hurt Izuku if she charged at him, despite being absolutely terrified to do so. The titles of the books were Hero Analysis for the Future and Izuka's Artwork. Huh, don't tell me you two are taking notes on how to be a hero and that your sister is helping with visuals. That's so pathetic. The boys behind Katsuki then let out a laugh. They're delusional. Yeah, real funny, guys. Izuku stood up nervously as Izuka clenched a fist to herself. She really wished she wasn't so terrified of them so that she could fight back. And yet she still wasn't able to do so. Because her body was just telling her to stay still for the sake of her brother. Just give them back. And she's not even helping me. Those are her drawings. Oh yeah. Katsuki raised a skeptical brow towards her and she didn't respond. He stared at her for what seemed like a while before opening it up. He please stop. She held out a hand while standing up. And he pushed her back into her seat with ease, though he did do it a bit too rough. She let out a grunt as she landed. Izuka. Her brother bent down to her to help her stand up. Kakin, you didn't have to do that. He frowned towards the blonde. Katsuki just ignored them, however. He flipped through her book, seeing sketches of skyscrapers, cherry blossom trees, and then he stopped at a very old sketch of the night sky, with her in the middle of the stars as a hero as well. He glowered and then slammed his hands together, creating an explosion to destroy the books. Izuku let out a scream of shock, and the books were now burnt. Izuka's eyes shook looking at her sketchbook. She had spent years drawing every single thing in there, and now he had damaged it. That's so mean. Izuku whined and then Katsuki tossed the books out the window. He screamed in horror as Katsuki's face suggested he could not care less. He then looked up to look straight into their eyes. Most first-string heroes show potential early on. People look at them and just know they're destined for greatness. Izuku was shaking with white eyes, Izuka frowning deeply from her spot. When I'm the only student from this garbage junior high to get into UA, people will start talking about me like that. They'll realize I'm legit, the next big thing. That's not ego talking, I just know I'm good. He looked away with a smirk. One of his friends looked away with a knowing look. Ego. Katsuki then placed his hand on Izuku's shoulders, smoke coming from his hand. Here's a little word of advice, nerds. He then gave a pleasant smile, even though the green-haired boy looked terrified. Don't even think of applying. And that goes for you, you meek little mouse girl. Or else. Izuku let out a whimper looking at him, and couldn't even say anything. Katsuki then shoved his shoulder into Izuka's, causing her to fall onto the ground. Both of the twins were then left alone, shaking. That's just sad, one of the boys commented looking at them. I thought you guys at least had some fight in you. They finally get it. They'll never be heroes. The other one remarked with a small smile. Better to find out now instead of later, I guess. The blonde then came to a stop just before they were about to leave. You know, if you really want to be heroes that badly, there actually might be another way. Just pray that you'll be born with quirks in your next lives. Then take a swan dive off the roof of the building. Izuku grunted at this as Izuka gasped, her forelocks flinching in alarm. She was then shaking while looking at the floor, biting her lip raw. He had said and done lots of things, but that was one of the worst things he could have said to either of them. The boy let out a growl while turning around. 
He was about to tell Katsuki off, but the blonde had a scary look on his face. He let out a few sparks from his hand, once again threatening to harm them if they tried anything. Something wrong. He growled out and Izuku was left there whimpering. Izuku didn't even look towards Katsuki. Her back towards him as she looked towards the floor. Katsuki blinked as he was once again looking at her, and she made a hand into a fist. I really, really, don't like Bakugo sen she thought to herself bitterly. The blonde narrowed his eyes a bit looking at her, as she frustrated him constantly. After taking a while to collect themselves after that, the two walked home together. They didn't even say anything to each other, either. That idiot. You can't go around telling people to kill themselves. What if I really jumped, what would he do then? Izuka angrily scratched her palm with two of her fingers holding her backpack. Bullying her was just by proxy at this point for Katsuki. Or maybe he just didn't really like her as much either. She didn't know and she didn't care. But telling them to go commit suicide just really pushed it too far for her. I can't believe he said that. It's a new low for him. I bet he wouldn't even care if we did actually do it. Izuku glanced over to a pond to see their books. Being used for fish food. Our dreams have turned into fish food. He murmured as Izuka could only stare. That's enough, give them back. He grabbed the books and the fish immediately swam away. Damn it. His eyes shook as he let out a pain grunt looking at the title. All of that work analyzing and gathering information. All burned up within seconds. All because of someone who wanted to make them miserable. Izuka gripped the straps of her backpack looking at the sketchbook. It wasn't her dream or anything, but she did really like art. And so to see it like this. Stupid jerk. Izuku growled a bit as Izuka closed her eyes sadly. Mom, hurry. A younger Izuku rushed down the hallway holding an action figure. The younger Izuka walked behind him, watching as he ran up to their mother in Komidoriya. She was washing the dishes. His sister's hair was shoulder length, though she still had the rings tied above her head and her forelocks weren't as big. And she was covered in blood apparently. Come on, mom. It's computer time. He bounced around happily as Izuka looked up at the woman. Please, mama, can you do it again? She asked a bit hopefully and politely. Already, she turned off the water. The woman then looked to her daughter and yelled in alarm. Oh my god, Izuka, what happened to you? She bent down to the little girl, who tilted her head in confusion. I spilled my red paint, she stated honestly and Inko blinked down at her. I can't get it off. Oh, her mother let out a sigh of relief and then smiled. My little artist, but you have to be careful when you're using your paints. You could have been hurt if you didn't tell me. Okay mama, I'm sorry. Izuka clutched at her dress sadly, feeling like she might have upset her mother. She gave a little smile and picked up the little girl in her arms. Don't worry about that. Izuku, wait in your room while I wash up your sister. Izuku had all might posters in his room and was holding the action figure actually. Ugh, faster, let's go. He implored while Izuka was standing next to him. She was on her tiptoes, bouncing up and down a bit. Her brother was shaking back and forth in his chair. Geez, I think you two have added 10,000 views to this one yourself, kids. And Ko gave a small smile. I don't know why you like it, I think it's scary. Izuku let out an excited giggle though. He then looked down to his sister and picked her up to sit on his lap. There, Inko smiled at this gesture. He was always looking out for his twin sister and making sure that she was comfortable. The video we loved was an old one, though I think I loved it more than Izuka did. Inko walked away as the video played. Disaster footage from a long time ago. But more importantly, it was the debut of the greatest hero the world has ever known. In the video, there was fire and destruction almost everywhere. The camera was also constantly shaking. Who is he? The guy's already saved 100 people at least, and it hasn't even been 10 minutes. A bleeding bystander exclaimed, looking up ahead to several people watching what was going on. This is, this is crazy. I can't believe it. On top of a fallen bus, a hero emerged while carrying several people. Izuku let out a light gasp as Izuka's eyes shined a little. The hero let out a laugh. Look, he's got more. He continued laughing while the little boy had a look of awe. Izuku slowly gave a beaming smile. Then the hero stepped onto the bus to fully face the crowd. Fear not, citizens. Hope has arrived. The man spoke up without hesitation. Izuku squealed with a big smile on his face, his eyes sparkling. The hero himself had a big grin on his face. Because I am here. Izuku let out an excited yell, his hair flying around. Izuku giggled at him, clapping a little. He then smiled, holding up his action figure above their heads. He's the coolest in the universe. And once we get our quirks, we're gonna be heroes, just like him. Izuka gave a beaming smile while waving her hands above her head. He laughed while Inko glanced back at the two. She then gave a hesitant look while turning away from them as, Sorry, kid, it's not gonna happen. The doctor informed Izuku plain and simple. Izuku then froze in place, dropping his action figure. Izuku let out a gasp, covering her mouth in horror. It was silent for a few seconds before their mother spoke up. Oh dear, so you really think there's something wrong, then? Most of the other kindergartners in their class have begun to show signs already. 
She glanced between the two. Izuka looked really nervous for some reason, biting her lip and giving a small sweat drop. My records say you're a fourth generation quirk user. What powers do you and their father have? The doctor responded and she glanced at her children. Izuku was still frozen in place while Izuka didn't look too pleased. Nothing too special. I can float small objects towards me. And my husband breathes fire. She wiggled her hand to make the action figure come back to her hand. They're useful enough, I suppose. Izuku should have already manifested one of these quirks or a combination of both. But after viewing his x-rays, I don't think he's going to. He glanced up at an x-ray of Izuku's hand. You see, when superpowers began appearing, there were many research studies conducted, and doctors discovered a link between the bones in a person's foot and their likelihood of developing a quirk. People with powers have only one joint in their pinky toes. Their bodies have evolved into a more streamlined version of the human form. He then pointed to the pinky of Izuku's x-ray, and Ko was looking between her children with a lost expression on her face. You can see here that Izuku has two joints in his pinky, like roughly 20% of the population these days. Based on the research that's available, it's safe to say your son isn't going to develop a quirk. And Ko then turned to Izuka, who didn't look very comfortable as she was shaking. All the little girl felt was guilt inside of her. She hadn't been examined yet, and after hearing about her brother, she didn't want to be. Can you check Izuka Nino? The little girl screamed, balling up her fists and standing up. Her eyes were squeezed shut. The three looked at her in shock for her reaction. No, I don't want to know. She then ran out of the room. Izuka, and Ko stood up in disbelief, letting out a sad sigh. She couldn't blame her daughter for not wanting to be told the same thing. After getting home, it was raining. The lights were turned off in Izuku's room, as he was watching the video again. But it didn't help much. It was a complete 180 of how he was excited to watch the video before. But now it just didn't feel the same. Who is he? The guy's already saved 100 people at least. And it hasn't even been 10 minutes. And Ko was facing the door while hearing the video. This is, this is crazy. I can't believe it. She glanced behind her as Izuku wasn't shaking his chair or giving any awing sounds. The hero on the video then laughed. Look, he's got more. Fear not, citizens. Hope has arrived because I am here. See that, mom? Inko fully turned to him as the video was paused onto the hero's smile. There's always a smile on his face, no matter how bad things get. She didn't say anything, her eyes saddening while looking at the back of the chair. Even when things seem impossible, he never gives up. The chair turned slightly and she shook, tears in her eyes. Izuku himself had tears in his eyes, but wasn't shedding them while pointing at the screen. Do you think, Izuka and I can be heroes too? Izuka herself was watching from the doorway, frowning sadly as her eyes looked tired. The woman slowly stepped over to him, bending down and hugging her child. I'm sorry, Izuku, to you and your sister. I wish things were different, she whimpered as the boy finally started shedding tears. The little girl tensed up, gritting her teeth sadly. It wasn't fair at all. He himself deserved a quirk more than anything. So why, mom, that's not what I needed you to say. Couldn't you say? My world was crumbling. There was only one thing I wanted to hear. And Ko slightly knocked onto Izuka's bedroom door, seeing the girl with her back turned towards her mother. Her head was laying on a pillow. She did have all Mike posters, but also some paintings she did in class hung up. Her bed was surrounded by plushies, and like Izuku, she had a computer and desk space. Izuka, she didn't get an answer as the woman sniffed, wiping at her eyes. I need you to please watch over your brother from now on. Okay. I wish. I wish that it didn't have to be like this. She bent down in front of her daughter's bed, crying. Izuka was listening though, as her eyes were half open, and she looked sad while clutching at her pillow. As she did, one of her pinkies started to twitch. Mama, it's not what you need to know. I wish I could tell you and Izuku tonight, but he's been through enough. He needs to hear something else from you, and from me. And so, a few days later, the little girl sat down on her bed, shadow over her eyes as she clutched her dress. She looked up with tears in her eyes as her family opened their eyes in shock, to see her hands sparking with white yellowish glitter, which was why she didn't want to be examined, because she didn't want to face the truth. But it was the only explanation. The two stood there in silence for a few seconds before hugging her tightly, Izuku shaking the entire time. Izuka continued to cry, her hands in front of her face. I'm so sorry, little brother. I wish you could take my place. She sobbed and Izuku frowned at her. Izuka, he placed his hand on top of hers. No matter what, you'll always be my big sister, so don't cry. She continued to sob sadly at the situation between them. Even when things seem like the end, All Might always brings hope. He's the greatest hero in the world. Because he's the shining hero we need. The two stopped in front of a tunnel, the cherry blossom petals floating by. I made a decision that day. No matter what anyone else thinks, I have to believe in myself. Izuku thought with a deep frown. And I'll keep smiling, just like him. He pumped a fist with a forced smile on his face, trying to get through what happened with Katsuki earlier. 
and I'll help my sister stand out with her quirk. After she told them that she had one, she refused to use it ever. Seeing her brother like that when he was told he wouldn't get one, it just broke her heart, and she felt that it wasn't fair to him to always show the fact that she had it. She wished she could just give it to him and then not of her quirk at all. But sadly, there didn't seem to be any way to do that. On the other hand, Izuku swore to convince her to use her quirk and be a strong hero, even if he had to drill it into her. And the only way to do that was to get into Yue, which was why he had signed her up without telling her. They stepped into the tunnel, Izuku laughing the whole time. Izuku shook her head slowly at him. Well, you certainly are still optimistic, she said with a small smile. In school, she was too nervous to speak, but she could only be comfortable around family. Hence why she wasn't being mousy as a certain blonde loved to call her. And she hated that name. A pile of sludge appeared behind the two, and they stopped. They glanced back and then slowly gasped in horror. Right in front of them was the sludge villain from earlier today. A villain. He loomed over them, the twins shaking. A cheer. Izuka backed away slightly, dropping her burned sketchbook. Either of you will make a perfect skin suit for me to hide in, kids. He started while coming out of the sewer hole. Both of them turned around to make a run for it. Izuka gasping as the villain was heading in her direction. Her brother then pushed her out of the way, letting himself get caught into the sludge villain. Izuka rolled to a stop as their books fell nearby and she grunted from the landing. Izuku felt like he was being torn apart with the sludge villain in his mouth trying to get into his body. And it felt slimy too. His sister looked up and then gasped sharply. I-Z-U-K-U. She cried out in alarm while standing up. Don't worry, I'm just taking over your body. It'll be easier for both of us if you or she doesn't fight back. It'll only hurt for a minute. You'll feel better soon. The villain stated and she gasped again from hearing this. I can't. Breathe. Izuku thought while gasping for air, clutching at the slime, but it didn't do anything. Grab all you want. My body's made of fluid. Thanks for the help. You're a real hero to me, kid. I didn't know he was in the city. I gotta get out of here fast before he tracks me down. Izuku gritted her teeth, clenching a fist. The only way to save my brother is if I use. No, I can't. I swore I'd never do that to him. But he's in danger. I gotta do something, anything. She then sprinted towards them, trying to pull him off Izuku. Get off of him. Like I said, made of fluid, sweetheart. But I gotta give you thanks too. Even though we both know you can't stand up against me. Get out of here. Izuku muffled to her and she continued trying to break him free. No, I won't leave you, Izuku. She shouted with tears in her eyes. My body. Getting. Weak. He dropped his hand slowly as he felt like he was suffocating. And that he wasn't able to fight back much longer. I. I think I'm dying. Tears were still in his eyes as he looked to his crying sister still trying to break him out. But it was no use. No way. This can't be the end. Somebody. He looked to the hero drawings from their books. With Izuka's being of the old one Katsuki saw. The boy squeezed his eyes shut as Izuka sobbed. Help. Izuku. I'm sorry I couldn't protect you. Somebody please help him. Even when he's right in front of me. I still can't save him. The cover popped off and the sludge villain turned around in alarm. At the other end of the tunnel, someone was bent down in front of the entrance. Have no fear, you're safe. Izuka gasped sharply while turning to him, her eyes shaking. He then slowly stood up, stomping his feet as he stood proudly. The petals from the trees flew in from behind. Now that I am here, that is. No way. It's. The sludge villain's eyes widened as he moved forward to attack. The hero ducked his head to avoid it, jumping forward. The sludge villain then struck his arm in an attack, the hero recoiling his right arm backward. Texas. Smash. He screamed while punching right through the villain and sending him flying. The villain groaned in pain as the wind was getting to be too much for him. Izuka yelped while bracing herself, her wrists in front of her like an X as her hair flew. I can't. Hold. Together. He then exploded into pieces, releasing Izuku from its hold. He had his eyes closed as Izuka ran over to him from the side. He then opened his eyes, seeing a shadow up ahead. He then got a closer look, recognizing the smile on the hero's face. Is that? Oh. Might. He then faded into darkness. Izuku had his eyes wide while his sister was supporting his head onto her lap. She gave a worried look down at her brother while a hand that wasn't hers lightly hit his face repeatedly. Hey, wake up. Hey he stopped as he saw Izuku coming too. Thought we lost you there. Thank goodness. Izuka sniffed while wiping her eyes with her wrist in relief. He's safe. Izuku's eyes went white looking up at the man. They were now out of the tunnel and he screamed, recoiling away from his sister in shock. Izuka glanced back at him in confusion. Well, looks like you're moving around all right. All Might spoke and she flinched in alarm. It was just hitting her that the hero was right behind her, and she didn't even know what to say to him. She yelped as she moved away as well, twitching. Sorry about that back there. I didn't mean to get you too caught up in my justicing. He waved a hand to them. Usually I pay more attention to keeping bystanders safe. But it turns out this city's sewer system is pretty difficult to navigate. He then let out a few laughs. Izuku meanwhile was in a state of both shock and disbelief. 
Izuka's head was smoking with her mouth open, still twitching. Anyway, you two were a big help. Thank you. I've captured the evildoer. He held up a soda bottle that contained the villain inside. The most amazing hero in the entire world. All Might. The real thing. In the flesh. Standing right in front of us. All Might had a big smile on his face while Izuku was internally fanboy. He looks so much cooler in person. It's funny. I used to admire him like my brother as a kid. But after learning about him being quirkless, I don't know how to react. Do I thank him? Do I just not say anything? He's All Might, and yet I can't even speak. He's so awesome it's intimidating. Holy crap, I gotta get an autograph. Izuku looked around for something. I've got a pen around here somewhere. He flinched as up ahead were their books. Please sign our books. The two opened them up to see signatures already. Well, Izuku's was much bigger. Because of Izuku's art, he didn't want to ruin it. So what he did instead was make it smaller, while also leaving a small message that said inspiring artwork. Keep it up. Izuku gave a small gasp from the compliment. He already did. Izuku squealed and then pouted at his sister's book. No fair you get a message. He then bowed repeatedly to All Might, Izuka hiding behind him shyly. Thank you so much. This will be an heirloom. A family treasure passed down for generations to come. T this is kinda embarrassing. Izuka murmured loud enough for her brother to hear. And please don't make my sketchbook a family heirloom just because it's him. All Might just gave them a thumbs up. Well, I've gotta get this guy to the police so they can take care of him. He lightly tapped the bottle in his pocket, waving to them. Stay out of trouble. See you round. Wait, Izuku murmured while watching the hero bending down to prepare for a jump. You're leaving. Already. I Izuku, let's just go. Izuka stated while holding his shoulders from behind still with an uneasy look. Mr. All Might is probably very busy with other hero duties. And we have to go home before the rush. Mainly so that they wouldn't bump into any crowds on their way home. The little lady is right. All Might stretched himself out. Pro heroes are constantly fighting time as well as enemies. Izuku let out a light gasp as his favorite hero was right in front of him. He couldn't just leave the experience like this. He can't go yet. There are still so many questions I have to ask him. Izuku turned to her brother knowingly and gave a small frown. Izuku, I know what you're thinking, but don't. I'm not saying to make this unmemorable, but he has to do his duties. Surely you don't want to get in the way of that, right? He frowned from what she said as she did have a point. Now stand back. I'm taking off. All Might warned and jumped up into the sky. Thanks for your continued support. A gust of wind blew in from his jump, the cherry blossom petals falling behind him. He then laughed, and Izuku's face was getting stretched out hanging onto his legs. Izuka had her eyes squeezed shut as her legs flailed around holding onto her brother's waist. Hey, 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 what do you think you're doing? I am sorry. Izuka cried out as loud as she could. I tried to stop him, but he did it anyway, Mr. All Might. Let go. He tried to push them off. I love my fans, but this is too much. No way. We're flying. If we let go, we'll die. Izuku shouted and the hero froze in place. Oh, that's a good point. He agreed with the boy. I just have a lot of things I want to ask you. Izuku had tears flying from his face due to the height and speed they were going at. Izuku's hair was flying out of control as she tried to keep her face straight. Personally, you're our all-time favorite hero, All Might, please. See can we please at least get back onto the ground. Izuku glanced down at the world below them, not wanting to slip and fall. Okay, okay, I get it. Just keep your eyes and mouth shut. All Might informed the two and they did so. He sighed while placing a hand on Izuku's back, looking around for a good place to land. The hero let out a cough, Izuku looking up in confusion. She couldn't see it, but blood trickled from his teeth. Shit. The trio finally landed on the roof of a building. The twins both traumatized from the flying experience. My whole life just flashed before my eyes, the boy murmured while looking like a zombie. Izuku landed on her knees in relief, taking deep breaths. Thank goodness, we're back on somewhat solid ground. She then glanced back at her brother with a small frown. But you can't do that anymore, Izuku. You could have gotten hurt. She then turned away as she couldn't really help him with the sludge villain earlier either. What kind of sister am I that I just allowed this to happen? What would mom even say if she found out about it? Huh? Izuku blinked and then realized she must have been feeling guilty about the whole thing, his eyes softening. Oh, I'm sorry, Izuka. He rubbed the back of his neck. But thank you for helping me back there before All Might came. Her eyes slowly widened as she looked back up at him to see her brother giving a small sad smile. I didn't mean to make you so scared of what would happen to me and for what I just did. I'll try not to do that again. He told her softly and she stared at him. She didn't think she'd feel so brave back there, even though she knew it didn't help much unlike All Might. But to him, it still at least meant something that she at least tried, even if she didn't use her quirk. It wasn't your fault, she stated while looking away again. It was out of your control. I can't blame you for that, she said meekly and All Might stared at the two in silence. He could tell that the two got along well. Not a very smart move. He spoke up after a few seconds, getting their attention. Bang on the door for a while. 
Someone will let you in. Izuka stood up while clutching her skirt and trembling. T thank you, Mr. All Might. She spoke up timidly and he froze. For, saving my brother. I mean, she fiddled with her skirt while looking at the roof. It's all because of you that he's safe. He glanced back towards the two. Brother, ah, I see, they look so identical to each other. Think nothing of it. Now, I have to go. See you on the flip side. He waved and Izuku gasped, standing up frantically. Wait, not yet. One second. He rushed over to the hero and Izuka held out a hand. Izuku, stop. No, I don't have any time. All Might denied the boy. I have to know. The green-haired boy shouted desperately, his sister turning to him curiously. Sorry, kid, it's not gonna happen. Can you check Izuka Nino? The little girl balled her fists while standing up. No, I don't wanna know. She then ran out of the room. I'm sorry, Izuku. To you and your sister. I wish things were different. He slowly dropped his hand from everything he had been repeating ever since he learned about not getting a quirk. Defenseless Izuku and Mousy. This school's already crappy. You really wanna embarrass it more by failing so hard. Izuku stood there in silence as Izuka stared at him, her eyes softening. Sometimes I do feel like I'm a failure, like there's no hope for me. But even so, I'm not gonna give up. Ever. He started to shake and Izuka placed a hand on his shoulder comfortingly. Is it possible to become a hero, even if I don't have a quirk, and for my sister to become a hero too when she doesn't want to use her own? She let out a small gasp, her eyes shaking from the question being asked. Izuku. She murmured quietly, shocked that he was still on this goal, on having her become a hero too when she clearly didn't want to. And here he was, still pursuing it despite her reluctance. All Might came to a stop and didn't say anything. I'm a normal kid without any powers, but my sister has a really awesome quirk that I want her to use because I desire what's best for her. Could we ever hope to be someone like you? Izuka shed a small tear hearing this, and it flew away. All Might glanced back to see the boy with his eyes squeezed shut. Izuka looked back towards the hero and her brother, wondering just what he was gonna say. It was a long and hard silence between the three of them. Meeting All Might was a dream come true, a real miracle. Standing in front of us was the hero we'd idolized most of our lives. Neither of us realized it at the time, but that chance encounter would change the course of our futures. I wish I could have felt the same amount of excitement Izuku had that day. Because if I did, maybe it would have helped me better to express just how much joy Kid Me would have had to see him. But, I still couldn't. Not because I hated him, but because my future would be scary for someone like me. The hero all might let out a laugh while carrying several people. He stood on top of a fallen bus. Izuku let out a light gasp as Izuka's eyes shined a little. The hero stepped onto the bus to fully face the crowd. Fear not, citizens. Hope has arrived. The man spoke up without hesitation. Izuku squealed with a big smile on his face, his eyes sparkling. The hero himself had a big grin on his face. Because I am here. Izuku let out an excited yell, his hair flying around. Izuka giggled at him, clapping a little. He then smiled, holding up his action figure above their heads. He's the coolest in the universe, and once we get our quirks, we're gonna be heroes, just like him. Izuka gave a beaming smile while waving her hands above her head. Sorry, kid, it's not gonna happen, the doctor informed Izuku plain and simple. Izuku then froze in place, dropping his action figure. Izuka let out a gasp, covering her mouth in horror. Can you check Izuka Nino? The little girl screamed, balling up her fists and standing up. Her eyes were squeezed shut. The three looked at her in shock for her reaction. No, I don't want to know. She then ran out of the room. Izuku stood in front of their hero, his fists clenched, even if I'll never have superpowers. Smoke came from Katsuki's hands as his eyes were angry and white. You and your mousy sister are worse than the rest of these rejects, you quirkless wannabes. Do you really think they'd let someone like you in when they could of me? Smoke came from his hands, and suddenly everyone was in dark shadow with red eyes, looking down at the twins. You'd never be able to hang with the best of the best, even if everyone thinks we're useless. Inko bent down to hug her child. I'm sorry, Izuku, to you and your sister. I wish things were different, she whimpered as the boy finally started shedding tears. Izuku was watching them, frowning sadly before her teeth gritted sadly. It wasn't fair to her at all. He himself deserved a quirk more than anything. So why, mom, that's not what I needed you to say. Couldn't you see? Inko sniffed while standing in front of her daughter's bed. Izuka, I need you to please watch over your brother from now on. Okay. I wish. I wish that it didn't have to be like this. She bent down in front of the girl's bed, crying. Izuka was listening though, as her eyes were half open, and she looked sad while clutching at her pillow. As she did, one of her pinkies started to twitch. Mama, it's not what you need to know. He needs to hear something else from you. And from me. Izuku was still shaking as he mustered up the courage to ask. Izuka stared at him, her eyes softening. She then placed a comforting hand on his shoulder. Despite everything, I still dream. And I have to know. Is it possible to become a hero, even if I don't have a quirk? And for my sister to become a hero too when she doesn't want to use her own? 
She let out a small gasp, her eyes shaking from the question being asked. Izuku. She murmured quietly at him in shock that he was still going at this goal. All Might came to a stop and didn't say anything. I'm a normal kid without any powers, but my sister has a really awesome quirk that I want her to use because I desire what's best for her. Could we ever hope to be someone like you? Izuka shed a small tear hearing this, and it flew away from her face. She couldn't even respond to that either. All Might glanced back to see the boy with his eyes squeezed shut. Izuka looked back towards the hero and her brother, wondering just what he was gonna say. It was a long and hard silence between the three of them, and then he finally answered the questions. Without a quirk or not having used one despite acquiring it, he wondered and then flinched. Suddenly it felt like everything was spinning for him, and he was shaking. Smoke came from his body as he tried to hold it in. Oh, no. Not now, damn it. Not here. The twins hadn't noticed this yet from the hero. People think we don't have a chance, and don't even know that my sister even has a quirk. That not having any powers makes me some kind of weakling. He looked away a bit bitterly, thinking of Katsuki. And Izuka hides it from everyone. Yet I can't understand why. My classmates like to make fun of us. But you know what? That makes me want to prove them wrong. To show them that she can do it too. That's why I want her to go to UA. To see for herself. Izuku. She sighed a little, closing her eyes. It's not that I don't appreciate what you're doing. But I can't do that. Not when it's just shoving it into your face. She then turned to him. Besides, it's a national school. And the thought of being around so many people is terrifying. She pressed her forefingers together slowly. Well, that's all the more reason to go. He gave her a sheepish smile. Anyway, ever since we were kids, I've thought that saving people is the coolest thing you can do. There was a giant cloud of smoke in front of them, and they still hadn't noticed it. He then gave a small smile. I want people to see my fearless smile and feel safe. But just as importantly, I want them to see my sister as someone capable of protecting them. To be able to know that she'd help them feel safe too. And be the kind of heroes everyone in the world looks up to. Just like you. The two finally looked up. To see a very skinny blonde man with wavy hair, baggy clothing, and black eyes with blue irises. Both of them were shaking in shock, unable to say anything to him. Izuku then let out a scream at the sight. In the Tatooine shopping district, people were walking around to search for things that they wanted. But in a dark alley, the bottle the sludge villain was trapped in was on the ground somehow. He slowly willed himself to open his eyes, and then looked around in confusion. Where am I? What happened? Texas. All Might started off while recoiling his right arm backward. Oh yeah, that bastard. All Might then punched right through the villain and sent him fly. Izuka yelped while bracing himself, her wrists in front of her like an X as her hair flew. The villain then exploded into pieces, releasing Izuku from its hold. If it wasn't for him, I'd be out of town already. The sludge villain complained bitterly. Suddenly, a few footsteps were heading his way. That was rough, one of them commented, as it was actually Katsuki and his two followers walking around. The blonde drunk from a while walking up front. Weren't you and the Midoriya's good friends back when you were kids? Katsuki didn't say anything, although he let out a small growl to himself from being reminded of Izuka. Yeah, you were a little harsh with them today, the other one pointed out. The blonde boy then looked towards the ground, gritting his teeth. It's their own fault for getting in my way. Damn that mouse. She's really pissing me off. Must be enjoying it right now. He grunted from being reminded of her and then kicked the bottle with the sludge villain in it. This caused the villain to break free as the bottle broke open, unknown to the boys. Why are you so mad at her for? I mean, yeah, she's still quirkless, but she's also a girl. One of them raised a brow at the blonde. His behavior about Izuka was a bit weird, to say the least. Not even when her brother was brought up did he act like that. Or at least not on the same level. You shouldn't waste your time on them. Katsuki came to a stop, remembering what they said from earlier. Izuku looked towards the ground. It's just that. I've wanted to be a hero since I was a little kid. I may not have a quirk, but I can still try my hardest, can't I? Izuku then stared at his sister in the classroom, giving her a small frown. You know, sis. He spoke up, getting her attention. You could just tell people the truth. She sat there in silence as she thought about it, Katsuki actually listening in from outside. And why should I do that? She questioned without looking back at him, a shadow over her eyes. You already know I wouldn't do that to you, Izuku. So just stop trying, okay? Katsuki flinched from this, wondering if they were talking about Izuka possibly. The blonde gritted his teeth even further since it was highly possible. And the fact that if it was true, then she had that secret from everyone at school for years. That was beginning to really frustrate him about her, because he had no way of knowing if this was the truth. But he didn't mishear what they said, either. I don't give a damn who she is. Someone's gotta teach that worthless nerd and little wimp mouse how the world really works. His hand then twitched as his can exploded right into flames. I hate it when he talks heroes, and when she thinks she can stand up to me. 
His two friends glanced to each other with nervous chuckles. They honestly couldn't tell if Katsuki just didn't like Izuku for the sole fact that she was related to Izuku, or that there might have been something deeper about it. But if they asked, they'd probably get killed. Hey, I got an idea. One of them spoke up. We should go to the arcade. Get your mind off it, you know. Katsuki stared at him for a few seconds, as he wasn't sure if that would work. But it was still at least something to keep him from thinking about it for too long. Fine, he said in defeat. Or we can sneak into the bar at the station, the other one suggested to them. The sludge slowly started moving past the burnt can on the ground. Pick up some ladies. Now that's a good idea. The first one agreed with him. Idiots. Katsuki yelled at them with a snarl. If we get caught, there's no way Yue would let me in. They both then flinched at something behind him. Hey, what's that? They pointed up ahead in fear. The blonde turned around to see the sludge villain coming to life right in front of them. Perfect. I like a skin suit with some fire. He opened up his mouth, showing his teeth. Katsuki's eyes slowly widened at him, shaking. Izuku let out a scream from the roof, still trying to process what they were looking at. Izuku's eyes were white looking at him, but wasn't screaming because she couldn't even react properly from the sight. I wait. Who? What happened? You deflated. Izuku exclaimed at the skinny man that had emerged from All Might, which made Izuku think that he just maybe disappeared into thin air. Uh, where'd All Might go? He then turned to the skinny man. You, you're not him. You're a fake. An imposter. Izuku. Izuku finally reacted by giving him a small frown. You can't go accusing people like that. She gripped her skirt while turning to the blonde man. Yes sir, I, I think there must be some confusion here. All Might was standing here and then he let out a sigh, interrupting her. I assure you both that I am all my blood then seeped from his mouth, freaking the twins out again. Impossible. Izuku screamed while his sister started panicking. I, is he alright? We should get him to a hospital or take him home. She stammered while waving her hands in front of her face. But that means going down there with people. She shook in fear, a very terrified look at the reminder. You know how guys at the pool are always sucking in and flexing and trying to look buff. I'm like that. All Might informed while wiping his mouth with the back of his wrist. And I can confirm to you that I'm fine, young lady. Although I do appreciate your concerns. This can't be real. Izuku cried out in disbelief, Izuku calming down. She then placed a hand on his shoulder. His eyes were white as he still couldn't believe that this skinny man was All Might. He would have known if this was the case. He was the go-to guy when it came to hero stats. And nowhere in his notebook did it say that this was even possible. No, I'm dreaming. All Might's a giant of a man who saves everyone. He defeats all obstacles and wins the day with a fearless smile. Little brother, I don't want to get your hopes up after years of admiring him. But I think you should at least let him explain, Izuku whispered into his ear. Izuku's decade-long worship of All Might could be clouding his judgment. Either that, or he was just still in his state of shock to really look at the evidence in front of him. All Might sighed and looked away. There's plenty of fear behind that smile. He then slowly sat down in front of the railing, still facing the twins. I'm counting on you two to keep your mouths shut. Don't go talking about this online or telling your friends, he warned the two of them. Huh. Izuku murmured in confusion while Izuka had some blue lines over her forehead. I don't have any friends. She was way too shy to even hold a proper conversation without stuttering. And she only hung around her brother at school anyway, so it wasn't like they had anyone to tell in the first place. Being quirkless didn't mean people were suddenly friendly in school towards them. And it had been like that ever since finding out Izuku wouldn't get a quirk. Their mother, they wouldn't tell her because she'd be concerned about their safety regarding the sludge villain. They watched as All Might lifted up his shirt. They both gasped at the sight, recoiling back as a massive scar covering the left side of his body was seen from him. It was like someone had punched him so hard that it couldn't be repaired. Izuka's eyes softened as it looked like it was extremely painful. Pretty gross, right? I got this in a big fight five years back. My respiratory system was basically destroyed. I lost my whole stomach. All the surgeries have pretty much worn me out. And it can't be fixed. Right now, I can only do hero work for about three hours a day. Rest of the time, this is what I look like. Izuku then gasped in realization. No way. Five years ago. So does that mean it was the fight with Toxic Chainsaw? The green-haired boy asked curiously. You smiled as usually after. But on the inside, you were in so much pain. Izuka's eyes shook a little. Wow, you two know your stuff, the blonde man commented, a bit impressed. But no, the punk may have landed some hits, but he couldn't bring me down. Most of the world has never heard of this fight. I did everything I could to keep it under wraps. He looked away briefly before turning back to the twins. I'm supposed to be the guy who's always smiling, right? I'm the symbol of peace. People everywhere have to think that I'm never afraid. Izuka gave a sad look in her eyes staring at him. To be able to endure all of that and yet could never show true emotion about how he felt. She couldn't help but relate to him a bit in that sense. Because she was always getting bullied due to her own decision of hiding her quirk. And she could never use it to make it all stop. 
because that would mean hurting her brother, and she didn't want to do that to him. But honestly, I smiled to hide the fear inside. All Might was looking at his hand and then made it into a fist. It's just a brave face I put on when the pressure is high. This job isn't easy. Izuku then let out a small gasp from hearing that of the greatest hero of all time himself. He then looked at them straight in the eyes. Pro heroes are always having to risk their lives. Some villains just can't be beaten without powers. So can you be heroes? Not without a quirk like she has. Izuka opened her mouth in shock a bit to hear those words. She then turned to her brother, who felt like his whole world was crashing down. The words he didn't want to hear from his hero were now a reality in his mind. Izuku. She clenched a fist in front of her chest, as she knew that he would take it personally since it was from the person he admired the most in almost his entire life. I see, he murmured, ignoring her reaction as he felt like he couldn't hear her. All he could hear were the words that All Might was telling them. If you want to help people, All Might got onto his feet. There are plenty of other ways to do it. You could become a police officer. They get crap because the heroes capture most of the villains. He walked away to the side, but it's a fine profession. The door then opened and he paused. It's not bad to have a dream, young man, or to want the best for your sister. Just, make sure your dreams are attainable. Realistic. Understand. He didn't wait for an answer as he closed the door right behind him, and the loud thud echoed for the two still on the roof. The young girl turned to her brother still shaking in shock. Little brother, she said sadly and gave him a hug, but he didn't return it. The person he had looked up to for so long and wanted to be like, had just crushed his dream of being a hero, even though he wanted to continue on with this goal despite being quirkless. Now he wasn't so sure anymore. All Might coughed while walking down the stairs. Now, let's get you to the station. He patted his pocket and then gasped looking to see that his pocket was empty, and he couldn't believe that he never noticed until now. He emptied out both pockets, but it didn't contain the bottle holding the sludge villain. He looked around rapidly for it, and then heard a noise right from outside. He looked out the window to see a giant cloud of smoke in the distance. He gritted his teeth a bit as he had a bad feeling about all this. He released his pockets slowly. Not good. The loud crash snapped the twins out of it, as they looked across the view to also see the cloud of smoke all might had seen. A villain! Izuku exclaimed, forgetting the previous disappointment for now. I wonder which hero will show. He then ran off, alarming Izuka. Izuku, wait. Can't we talk this out at home? A villain means I have to go down there and face. Others. She shook in fear at the thought of it. He then stopped in place as he recalled what he was just told a few minutes ago. Some villains just can't be beaten without powers. So, can you be a hero? Not without a quirk like she has. Izuku looked towards the ground, frowning deeply. He slugged his shoulders and walked instead of running. Izuku noticed this change and caught up to him. Izuku, I know that it was hard to hear, but I also know that you haven't given up yet. He blinked as she pumped her fist shyly. You do see that, right? Even if it is all might, you're still capable of doing whatever you want to put your mind to. He blinked and then gave a sad smile. Thanks, big sister. He walked right past her and she stared after him. He had his hands in his pockets. Let's go home. I'll get you your favorite on the way, ramen with pork. Izuka gave a small sigh that he was concerned about her needs still when he was the one who needed the support. She walked after him, but not before giving him a hug from behind. He flinched from the contact, glancing back to see her face hiding into his uniform. I wish you had a quirk. Izuku blinked and then gave a tiny smile as her comfort was helping at least a little. Yeah, thanks, Izuka. All Mike panted while running as fast as he could. With his injury though, he couldn't be as fast as he wanted to. He finally had made it closer to the location of the smoke, while people were in chaos. Suddenly, smoke and fire broke some windows. People were running away in fear as the shopping district was on fire, debris falling as well. It's a monster. Several heroes came up, gasping as they were holding citizens back, as well as some police officers. They looked up ahead in shock to see the sludge villain behind it all. He was surrounded by flames, while also having Katsuki in its clutches. It's taken someone hostage. Death arms exclaimed as they could faintly see the boy. He pumped his big fists together. He then ran forward in anger. How dare you prey on a child? He screamed while jumping up into the air. He raised his fist and when he fell towards them, he punched. But it had little impact on the sludge villain. In fact, Death Arm's fist was practically going into the villain's body. What the hell is this? Some kind of goo. He recoiled back in a bit of fear as he tried to get his arm out, but couldn't. The sludge villain then used this distraction to knock him into a wall hard. You okay, Death Arm's? Two pro heroes ran up to check on him. Heads up. The other one warned as he stepped back. The other ducked his head to avoid an incoming attack from the sludge villain. Huh, stay back, or I'll snap his neck. He grinned evilly towards the heroes, recoiling his arm back. He looked towards the struggling Katsuki, who lifted up his head with a scream. He pulled as hard as he could to break free, but it was no use. You picked the wrong guy to mess with. He growled out while moving his head down to try and pull the sludge off there. 
I'm gonna send you back to whatever sewer you crawled out of. He then tried activating his quirk. Let me go. He screamed at the top of his lungs as an explosion went off around them. Death Arms had to shield himself just from the amount of power that Katsuki was giving off right now, as well as the other two pro heroes. You've got so much power, the sludge villain mocked, though was impressed by this. I really hit the jackpot. With a quirk like yours under my control, I can take All Might down with one punch. He then emitted a lot of sludge almost like a cage, and one of the pro heroes gasped in shock. As much as they wanted to fight back, they still had to remember that Katsuki was in danger, even if he would never admit it. Well, is that some kind of special move? One of the bystanders wondered from the entrance. This dude is a legit supervillain. One of the women then gasped while seeing something. It's her. By her, she meant Mount Lady running her way over to them. That new hero, Mount Lady will stop him. Mount Lady then gasped, flinching as she stopped in place. She looked down at her foot. My only weakness. I need at least a two-lane road if I'm gonna make my way through here. She tried to determine where her foot would go, but because the lanes were too narrow, there was no way she could get through. And that wasn't even to mention the amount of people looking up at her at the moment. She couldn't get away with getting past without causing injuries or damage to the buildings around her. Finding another route wasn't an option either, since it was deep inside the shopping district where the villain was attacking. The two followers of Katsuki looked around at the fire in fear. Neither of their quirks would be able to stop this. Suddenly, a wooden arm grabbed the both of them, pulling them out. The hero responsible was Kamui Woods, holding two other people he rescued as well. He ran through the fire. Fire and wood don't exactly make a good combination. He called out, since his wood would work like firewood if he were to get engulfed in it, and it wasn't a fun experience to have either. I'll let someone else stop this guy. He then jumped up into the sky. Don't look at me. Backdraft stated while putting out fires using his equipped fire hose hands. He also had one on his back. I've got my hands full here. Where are those fire trucks? He then looked around to see if any other heroes would be able to bypass all the chaos going on. Can you guys get to him? Can't get a grip on his weird body. Death Arms responded. His previous punch already proved he wasn't the right hero to fight against the sludge villain. He didn't have nearly as enough strength. Plus, that kid's quirks causing explosions left and right. Katsuki wasn't the type to be calm and rational during situations like this. So his constant explosions trying to break free would also make it harder to reach him. This is a shutout. A baseball-centered hero spoke as they looked up ahead at the sludge villain. We've got to rally and knock him out of the park somehow. The villain cackled while having a hold over Katsuki's mouth. The boy grunted as he struggled inside of the sludge. Death Arms gritted his teeth, and then the villain saw the pro heroes. Incoming. He and Death Arms ran away as the villain thrusted his sludge towards them, hitting the ground behind them. It's no good. None of us have the right quirks to stop a villain like this. He called out while the other heroes ran off. We'll do damage control until someone with the right powers shows up. One of them called out, only for another explosion to occur. There are still plenty of people to save. Backdraft informed them while still putting out fires. Don't worry, Kamui Woods shouted from a rooftop, having placed the rescued citizens there. I bet every hero in the city's coming. He placed the last person down safely on the roof. The citizens were also watching the fight. Death Arms shook an angry fist that he wasn't able to help Katsuki, or any of the pro heroes right now for that matter. I'm sorry, kid. You'll just have to hold on a little bit longer. Damn. He shouted in frustration over the whole situation. If I only had more power, I could blow this guy away. Um, this looks bad. A citizen commented as All Might finally got in closer from behind. Maybe we should run. He gripped a lamppost next to him, as no one was paying attention to him. Come on, heroes, you've got this. All Might panted in exhaustion, looking up. From his spot, past all of the people, he could faintly see the sludge villain in the distance. He gasped in shock, recoiling back as he realized how this happened. Must have dropped him in the air. Izuku and Izuka clung onto him and he tried to get them off. I was distracted, worrying about my time limit. I can't believe I made such a rookie mistake. And after lecturing that boy about what it takes to be a hero, he clutched at his injury a little. He couldn't believe he let it get this carried away. And if he wasn't injured, he'd be able to transform easily and solve the whole thing in seconds. But he couldn't, all because he didn't take caution. Not to mention that he probably crushed Izuku's dreams and his thoughtfulness of just trying to help his sister. And yet, he was seen as the greatest hero of all time, which he felt was undeserved now. I'm pathetic. Izuku and Izuka, meanwhile, were walking down the street together. He looked at the page in his notebook of Kamui Woods. Izuka looked at the old picture of herself being a hero. As much as she wanted to be one as a kid, she just couldn't. Not when Izuku didn't have a quirk, and she knew that he wanted her to pursue it, but she wouldn't be okay doing that to him. Especially when starting it as a long-term thing by going to UA. They'll never be heroes. Better to find out now instead of later, I guess. He flipped through a page to see a page on Mount Lady. He continued to flip, and saw the autograph of All Might. 
Izuka went to hers as well, gripping her sketchbook. He complimented her art, and yet his advice did hurt a bit, and it wasn't even directed at her. Make sure your dreams are attainable. Izuku closed the notebook, letting out a sad sigh. Even All Might said it. He murmured to his sister, getting her attention. A hero needs a quirk. He sniffed, tears in his eyes as his hand reached out to his nose. Don't cry, damn it. Deep down, you knew this all along. You've just been avoiding reality. That's why you were trying so desperately to prove yourself wrong. Izuka gave a deep frown. Nothing she could do or say right now would help. And she knew why, she wasn't All Might. And that was probably the one thing that could cheer him up. If only she knew where he was so she could try and get him to talk to Izuku. Suddenly, there was a crash from the shopping district as they were walking right past it. They looked up in unison, seeing the smoke near the entrance. That's strange. Is the fight from earlier still going on? The boy wondered as they stared. I don't think so. Didn't it take place elsewhere? Izuka blinked while squinting her eyes. Why are we here? Did we subconsciously walk this way to check it out? The light to walk came on and they walked behind the crowd. Izuka was hanging onto her brother's backpack while hiding, as she usually did in big crowds. We shouldn't even stop. All my notes are useless. And yet he did, trying to peek past everyone to see all the commotion. He then gasped sharply as he saw the sludge villain up ahead, just like All Might could. He recognized the villain instantly. That's the guy who attacked us. He gasped again in horror, causing Izuka to peek past him. She flinched as she let out a horrified sound. What? She covered her mouth in disbelief staring at the villain, her eyes shaking. That can't be right. All Might captured him. He remembered All Might stating it to the twins himself. And yet, Izuku also remembered that after he revealed his true form to the two, he didn't have the bottle on him anymore. And it wasn't his imagination either, he knew which pocket it was in. With the bottle, if he dropped it, Izuku's face was getting stretched out hanging onto All Might's legs. Izuku had her eyes squeezed shut as her legs flailed around holding onto her brother's waist. That means, it's my fault, he murmured loud enough for his sister to hear. She gasped while turning to him in realization. She was the one who tried to stop him, after all, so he couldn't blame his sister for trying to allow All Might to go back to his duties. Her eyes widened as she looked back to the sludge villain, biting her lip nervously. He was captured, but the weight of holding two people must have made him drop the bottle. All Might wouldn't be unable to help Katsuki right now if we hadn't held on to him. I should have done more to stop Izuku. So partially, this is my fault too. I'm his big sister and I'm supposed to make sure he doesn't do stuff like this. Why aren't the heroes doing anything? A man turned to another bystander. It looks like they've met their match. He turned to the first man. Plus, the villain captured a kid. Things aren't looking good for him. Both of the twins heard this, flinching in alarm. If that was true, then it just made everything worse. They took a closer look, as they couldn't see Katsuki just yet. He caught someone. I wonder how long they've been in there. How can they survive being suffocated like that? I thought I'd die after only a few seconds of struggling. Izuku, like his sister earlier, covered his mouth in horror. Oh man, this is horrible. Izuka whispered in absolute terror. Wait, I'm confused. Isn't that the villain All Might was chasing earlier today? A man pointed out and they gasped while looking up. What? All Might? No way he lost. Where is he? The twins started looking around in alarm from all of the murmuring going on. This was getting worse by the minute. All Might himself was on the opposite side of the twins, neither side able to see each other. Well, can someone call him or something? The skinny man gasped while looking up. Seriously, why hasn't he shown up to help the heroes? The blonde let out a painful groan holding his chest. Unfortunately, if he tried transforming back now, he'd just deflate back to his normal form, meaning that he couldn't step up like he usually would've. Izuku slowly put his head down, shaking as he felt guilty. If he had just listened to Izuka, none of this would probably be happening. All because he wanted to ask his hero how he could become someone like All Might and the one to blame. He wasted his energy on me. Izuka was shaking as well, hands in front of her mouth. I did this by not properly taking care of Izuku. I should have insisted that we just leave All Might alone. And now he can't even come in to help whoever is trapped in there. All Might continued to clutch at his injury, sweating bullets. I'm worthless. He can't power up yet. Izuku thought as the twins continued to stare. And none of the other heroes have the quirks to stop this monster. He had memorized his stats book well enough to know that none of them had the power to stop him. Their quirks were either ill-suited for the environment, or they couldn't even get a good hit on the sludge villain. The pro heroes gritted their teeth, frustrated even more with themselves at not being able to do much. All Might gripped his injury even tighter. So pathetic. It's my fault. I'm sorry. So sorry. Izuku tilted his head down even further. Izuka shed a silent tear, closing her eyes. Whoever you are in there, I'm so sorry this happened to you. Please just be okay after all of this. All Might gripped the lamppost tight. If he was in his powered-up form, he'd easily break it. A disgrace. Help will show up and save the day, I'm sure. 
Izuku thought hopefully as Katsuki was slowly starting to be revealed. All Might gritted his teeth. I'm not a real hero. There has to be someone out there able to stop him and save whoever got kidnapped. Izuka's hands were trembling as she felt so useless. Someone, a real hero will come soon. The sludge villain growled and laughed in glee, since he was able to continue what he wanted to do. Katsuki had stopped struggling at this point, as this villain was unfortunately having a tight grip on him. Izuku and Izuka froze in place as they thought their eyes were playing tricks on them. But no, once Katsuki opened his eyes, they knew that he was the victim, and that they couldn't let this continue further. The two gasped, dropping their books immediately. They rushed forward, shocking everyone watching. The boy panted as they both ran into the area. No, you idiots. Death Arms held out his hand to try and stop them. Stop. You're gonna get yourselves killed. Not these brats again. The sludge villain recognized them. Deku, Mousy, Katsuki murmured as he opened his eyes. They ran past the flames, not even getting hurt by them. What are we doing? Why are we running? Why can't I stop? Why am I doing this for someone who is so mean to us? Am I just forgetting everything he's done? What can I do here that no other hero could? Izuka thought to herself while gritting her teeth a bit in determination. You're toast, kids. The sludge villain announced while about to attack them. What do we do? What would a hero do right now? He then remembered something from his notebook about Kamui Wood's lacquered chain prison. Page 25. Right. The sludge villain flinched as the two took off their backpacks. Take this, Izuku announced as they threw them right at the villain, several of their stuff hitting him. He let out a growl while releasing Katsuki's mouth, allowing him to breathe. He let out a sharp gasp and coughed. K-I-C-C-H-A-N. Izuku screamed once the twins reached him, the boy clawing at the sludge as much as he could. It wasn't really doing much, though. What the hell? Why are you two here? Katsuki wondered as Izuku tried to pull at it. But it was like Play-Doh or something similar to that effect. I dunno, Izuku exclaimed while in a panic, but didn't stop his actions once. My legs. They just started. Moving. Same. Here. Izuku called out while struggling. Katsuki let out a grunt as the hold on him was tightened. They continued clawing at him, but it wouldn't help despite that. And yet, they still pursued this. Something in them just told them to continue trying to get Katsuki out. I don't know why I did what I did. Sorry, kid. I'm the one to blame. You really think they'd let someone like you? He's the coolest in the universe. K-I-C-C-H-A-N. I've wanted to be a hero. I honestly don't think you can become a hero. There's always a smile on his face. Maybe it was the look on his face. Izuku flinched a bit while shedding tears, a fearful smile of his own on his face. Kaken, I couldn't just stand there and watch you die. He admitted while Izuku closed her eyes. And, no matter what I feel towards someone, that doesn't mean that I shouldn't help them. She murmured and All Might grunted with wide eyes at their declarations. Something about those two. It was like a fire sparked within him, regardless of his injury. What else can we do? The girl racked her brain in frustration. Izuka then gasped in realization as her quirk could stop this or at least help in some way. But she had never used it before. And yet somehow, she had an understanding what to do. She didn't know what it was. Maybe instinct or just because her hands wanted to move in a certain direction to activate it. She then stepped backwards while watching the two. Holding up a hand to get a good target with just eyeballing them. As much as I don't like Bakugo san or having to use my quirk in front of my brother, I can't just stand there anymore. Not like I did with Izuku. I need to act fast before I lose my shot and accidentally hurt Bakugo san or anyone else. I have to make this right for myself and my brother. Izuku, I need you to duck your head, okay? She called out to him, confusing the boys as they stared at her. The pro heroes and citizens all stared, as they had no idea what she was up to. Now, she told him urgently and he nodded in understanding. Okay. He moved his head down, glancing back at her. I think I see what you're doing. He didn't question it further, he just trusted that this would be the right course of action. It was just a feeling that it was something to help them out. Get the hell off me. Katsuki screamed to the sludge villain and Izuka gasped sharply. Her bangs flying. She then narrowed her eyes, taking a deep breath. I have to do it now. She then slammed her hands together in front of her. To the shock of everyone, she moved away her hands to reveal a bow shaped like a crescent moon made out of light created by her. She caught it in her hand and focused her aim, glaring at the villain. What? That little girl has a quirk. The sludge villain exclaimed in disbelief at her. Katsuki's eyes shook at her in shock. He had always believed that she didn't have a quirk at all. She and Izuku were twins, so it only made sense by association she didn't possess one. And yet, here she was, showing to everyone just what she could do, despite her hesitation because of Izuku. Her brother gasped in awe from seeing her power, his eyes widening. Izuka's hair was flying as she wasn't scared in this moment, because all she wanted to do was save Katsuki. She bit her lip, still skeptical just a little by how Izuku might react to this later. Or Katsuki because unbeknownst to the twins, he had already suspected a quirk. But not this. I'm sorry, Izuku, Bekugo-san. 
She murmured as she saw her shot, a spot right above Katsuki that wasn't moving at all. She then moved her left arm to her right wrist. She slid it backwards as a shooting star appeared as her arrow and she pulled back as far with her crescent moon bow as she could to make sure it'd go at the right speed and direction. Izuku, Katsuki, and All Might all looked at her in anticipation. Izuku's breath escaped him as well as Katsuki's. She then fired it, the bright star shining as she hit her target, and it caused the sludge around the spot to dissipate. The star flew towards the sky. Ag, damn brat. The sludge villain exclaimed in pain and she panted, dropping her arms as she couldn't believe what she just did. Whoa, death arms murmured as everyone continued to stare. That girl's quirk managed to get a hit on him. One of the heroes exclaimed in shock. What kind of quirk is that? Is she a student heading to UA? That's some power. Izuku's eyes shook as he tried not to cry from how amazing it was to see her quirk for the first time in his life. All for something that she didn't have a passion for once she learned the truth about her brother. Izuka. He murmured in awe of his sister. Katsuki's eyes continued shaking as he couldn't believe what he had seen it. All Might got over his stupor and his arms started to grow in size. I have to do something. No matter the cost. He continued clutching his injury while getting taller and muscular. Just a little bit longer, kid. The sludge villain looked down at the twins, raising an arm. And I'm done playing with you too. You're gonna regret you ever stepped up to me, little girl. Izuka gasped from her spot, running up to Izuku just like the other heroes were. Save the children. This thing will kill them. Death Arms reached out a hand as the twins braced themselves. There was a movement as the sludge villain swung down his arm. And then there was a huge explosion. And then it was silence, as no one could see anything from the smoke it produced. Izuku's hair was flying as Izuka hugged him close to protect him. I really am pathetic. A familiar voice spoke up and they looked up, shocked to see All Might standing right in front of them. He was holding back the sludge villain from hurting them, his arm strong enough to hold it back. All Might. But, I told you the traits that make a great champion. But I see now I wasn't living up to my own ideal. He lifted up his arm to break himself free. And they stared at him in awe. Katsuki's eye was shaking looking at the hero he had also admired as a kid. The hero then grabbed Katsuki's arm, blood flying from his mouth. Pros are always risking their lives. That's the true test of a hero. Damn you, All Might. The sludge villain raised a hand towards them. Detroit. Smash. He moved his fist forward while pulling out Katsuki, sending the sludge villain flying. His punch also caused the fire to go out because of the intense winds coming from it. Mount Lady shielded people from her spot with her arms. The heroes hanging on to things around them as much as they could. People looked up as there was a big cyclone in the sky thanks to the attack. Soon, it stopped spinning, and the sludge villain was nowhere to be seen. All Might panted heavily as smoke came from his fist. Everyone stared at him with wide eyes as it was silence again. Rain then started to pour, someone looking up to the sky. Izuka, Izuku, and Katsuki were all on the ground, trying to recover from what just happened. Don't tell me all that wind just now was. Look at the clouds. They're moving. The clouds were indeed moving above their heads while All Might had a big smile on his face. Blood was seeping from his mouth. Holy crap. Death Arms muttered towards All Might, as he didn't even know the number one hero was capable of this. He changed the weather. All Might wiped off the blood with his hand, slowly standing up as it continued raining. Did that really just happen? Someone asked as everyone looked at him in awe. They then all cheered for the hero's victory. He changed the weather with a single punch, like it was nothing. All Might saved the day again. He's amazing. All Might wobbled a bit, and thankfully no one noticed. However, that attack did just take a lot out of him. He held up his fist, so that no one would see it. He had to hold on as much as he could so no one would know the truth. He glanced over his shoulder, staring at the unconscious Izuku. Izuku was still panting trying to collect herself over the shock of using her quirk. And he could tell by the way her body was reacting that it was her first time using her quirk ever since acquiring it. After that, the heroes collected all of the scattered mounds of sludge. The police were putting away all the bags of sludge, of what the heroes could collect. They saluted to a few officers, and the villain went into police custody where he belonged. All Might was standing proudly in front of the press, people taking photos of him. Izuku glanced at him nervously, he and Izuka sitting in front of two heroes. Kamui Woods and Death Arms both looked pissed at them, red marks at the back of their heads. You morons, do you have a death wish? Kamui Woods started off as they shook nervously. Thankfully, they were blocking the crowd from the two. There was absolutely no reason for you to put yourselves in danger like that. Even if she had a quirk that we didn't know about, she's still not a pro hero. Death Arms shouted down at them. Katsuki nearby was getting checked on by two other heroes, and some reporters were trying to get some answers out of him. My sister and I got chewed out by the heroes, big time. While Kaken was praised for his bravery, and Izuka a little bit too. Man, you're tough, kid. One of the pro heroes commented at his lack of fear. And that quirk is something else, just like her. He looked up towards Izuka.
who was sweating immensely. When you two want to go pro, head over to my agency first. I'd love for you to be my sidekick while you're training. Katsuki wasn't registering any of this, though. If he was, he'd be a lot more angry. No, instead he was looking at the twins with narrowed eyes, especially towards Izuka, who didn't notice it at all, as if he couldn't be even more pissed off than he was with them earlier. That girl had a quirk the entire time, and yet seriously didn't even think to mention it to anyone. And he couldn't wrap his head around why exactly. He shouldn't even care that Izuka did have a quirk, but for some reason, part of him did enough to have a bit of a resentment towards the girl. He then clenched his teeth in frustration. As reckless and dangerous as that was, you are pretty strong with that quirk of yours, Death Arms commented towards the green-haired girl. She gasped while looking up at him, her bangs flinching. Didn't think you had it in you. I have to agree, Kamui would sigh a little. But if you want to go to UA, you can't go around using your quirk when you're not permitted to. So we'll let it slide just this once. Her eyes went white as she looked towards the ground. T thank you, sir. She murmured quietly to them, Izuku giving her a small smile. He knew that she could muster up the courage to help Katsuki. Just like him, she couldn't ignore people in danger no matter who it was. The sun was starting to set as the chaos from the earlier incident had died down. It was getting broadcasted on TV, though. And it was also hitting the papers as well. Izuku let out a small sigh as he and his sister were heading home. We wanted to apologize to All Might, but he was swarmed by interviewers. I didn't want to interrupt. Not to mention my sister would probably get overwhelmed by all of the people since they'd want to get her picture. I can always try to send a message through his website when we get home. I just want to sleep in my comfortable bed. Izuka let out a small sigh, feeling exhausted. Might have had something to do with using her quirk. Oh yeah, I can't believe you used your quirk for the first time. He clasped her hands, taking her by surprise. It was amazing. I've already written lots of notes about it too so I can help you understand it better. Really? She blinked in shock and he pulled out his notebook. Uh-huh. Can fire a shooting star at will, but distance unknown. Would be great for long-range attacks. He flipped to a new page, despite the book being burnt, and showed it to her. You can really do a lot with that quirk, you know. After all, you did manage to help Kakin today. So this is a great first step to becoming a hero, Izuka. Her eyes lit up a little from his praise and confidence in her abilities. But then she flinched as she remembered that he still wouldn't get a quirk. But, Izuku Daku, Mousy, both of them flinched, Izuka frowning as she turned around. They saw Katsuki heading right for them. Kakin, Izuku murmured in confusion that he was seeking them out. Oh no, what does he want with us? Izuka hid a bit behind her brother. The blonde panted as he came to a stop, glancing behind the green-haired girl and already getting annoyed. Hey, you come out of hiding, Mousy, before I kill you. He growled and she squeaked in fear. Izuku gave a small groan at hearing this. Izuka didn't look too pleased either as she slowly stepped to her left so he could see her. Katsuki then slowly caught his breath, shaking. Listen, I would never ask for weaklings like you to help me. Don't think you can look down on me, either of you. Huh. He looked up at them intensely, especially towards the girl. Got that. I was fine by myself. You're just a quirkless failure who won't even cut it as a rent-a-cop, Deku. And you, you're a weak little mouse who won't even dare stand up to me. He pointed at Izuka with a glare. You didn't help me. You did nothing. Don't forget it. He then turned around, stomping in the opposite direction. I don't owe you anything. And you're gonna tell me how you managed to hide a quirk from me, Mousy. You better believe that. Both of them sweat dropped, wondering why he even had to come here to say all of this. What was that? Izuku murmured in confusion, but decided not to question it further. Since when does he care so much that I used my quirk? Izuka mumbled, though a bit annoyed too. He was acting a bit strange lately now that she thought about it ever since earlier today. First he kept glaring towards her more so than her brother, and now he was demanding to know about her quirk. Izuku then gave a small smile. Kakin is right, though. It's not like I myself actually did anything to help today. But, at least we tried. He then walked off with a sad smile on his face. Guess now I should get back to giving up on my dreams. Izuka stared after Katsuki, wondering what was going through his head. Was it really that important to him about her quirk? She couldn't fathom why, it wasn't like he needed to know unlike her brother. So she really couldn't understand his investment when he was the last person she wanted to tell. The boy glanced back at her, blinking. Izuka, you coming? Oh, right, sorry, she snapped out of it and walked after him. A few seconds later, All Might in his muscled form slid right in front of the two. I am here, he declared to the twins. The two screamed as the girl hid behind Izuku in alarm. All Might, where'd you come from? Uh, how'd you get rid of all those reporters? He glanced around as they didn't see them anywhere, and he'd think that they'd follow him. W, what are you doing here? Izuka slowly came out of hiding, though still trembling in anxiety. 
He simply laughed in response. I stand for justice, not sound bites, because I. He then flexed his big muscles. I am all my he turned back into his skinny form, spewing out blood from his mouth. Izuku screamed as Izuka blinked rapidly. The man let out a few coughs to recollect himself. He then wiped off his mouth, staring at the both of them. Young children, I came here to thank you, and also to discuss your question from earlier. The two blinked in surprise and confusion. He didn't wait for them to comment. If you hadn't told me about your life and your sister, if you hadn't run into that fight, if you, young lady, hadn't used that amazing quirk of yours against that villain, I would have been a worthless bystander watching from the crowd. So thanks. Oh, no, Izuku flinched in alarm. It was my fault he was there to begin with. I got in the way of your hard work. I wasted your energy. And, not to mention your time, Izuku was just trying to stop me, and I didn't listen. It's not just you, she murmured, getting his attention. If I had protected you in the first place by using my quirk, I could have prevented all of that trouble to begin with. She rubbed her arm a bit. That's not true. He whipped around to her. If not even Kakan could fight him off, you couldn't have done the same either. I don't blame you, Izuka. She gave a tiny smile towards him, earning a small hum and smile from All Might. He then cleared his throat. I'm not done. He spoke up, getting their attention. You told me you didn't have a power and that your sister doesn't use hers. So when I saw this timid, quirkless boy and a shy, unwilling girl with a quirk try to save a life, it inspired me to act, too. The two gasped while looking up at him. Their mouths didn't want a close looking at him. There are stories about every hero, how they became great. Most have one thing in common. The two rushed forward towards Katsuki. Their bodies moved before they had a chance to think, almost on their own. Izuku gasped a little, his eyes shining. The cherry blossom petals started to fall around them. The boy's eyes glistened as he moved his head down, sniffing. Izuka turned to him with a shocked expression. For some reason, I remembered my mother's words in that moment. I'm sorry, Izuku, to you and your sister, and Ko cried out to him. I wish things were different. There were so many other things that she could have said to my brother, but I understood why she didn't. If I were her, what would I say if only one of my children had a quirk? He clutched at his heart while crying, Izuka bending down to him comfortingly. She had a small smile on her face as she knew that these were tears of joy, not sadness, that he was finally being acknowledged as the fledgling hero he wanted to become. And today, that's what happened to you both. Izuku's tears began falling as he squeezed his eyes shut, and he was shaking as he lowered his body. You never told me, Mom. Back then, the thing I wanted you to say, the words I needed to hear. This was all he wanted, Mom. The day he found out, he didn't need sorrow. No need for heartbreak either. He kneeled onto the ground as Izuka kneeled in front of him. The wind blew in All Might's hair as he stared down at the twins. Young man, young lady, you two can become heroes. He spoke and Izuku continued clutching at his chest. He felt like his heart was gonna burst out of it as he couldn't stop crying. Izuku leaned forward to give her brother a big hug. He then cried into her shoulder as she gave a teary-eyed small smile. Izuku continued to sob, grateful for her support as he let the moment sink in. All Might just stood there, allowing them to let it all out. Dreams can become reality. Oh, by the way. I forgot to mention that this is the story of how we became the world's greatest heroes, and it would be an adventure on this path that we could never forget. It would all be thanks to All Might that we got our start. A light shined down on a hero striking a pose in front of the sun. The world's most popular hero, All Might, age unknown, quirk unidentified. He broke onto the hero scene and was an immediate hit, thanks to his abilities. And it wasn't just all talk, either. All Might had stopped many fights, saved millions of people, and everyone loved him. Shown by his incredible strength and unwillingness to give up on just about anything. Ever since he appeared, crime rates have drastically decreased. His very existence, a deterrent for many would be villains. The world's a safer place. They don't just call him the symbol of peace. It's what he is. Almost no one would dare step up to him thanks to his undefeated streak, no matter what. It honestly gave the police forced moments of peace when they had quick and easy arrests thanks to the one who could do it all. And this pillar of justice said to my sister and I, the blonde skinny man who was in his true form from All Might stared down at them. Izuka was giving her brother a big hug as he cried onto her shoulder. Young man, young lady, you too can become heroes. Midorias, you're kidding. His tears fell onto his sister's uniform as he had reminded himself of everything he had heard growing up. Quirkless wannabes, you really think they'd let someone like you in when they could have me? He continued to weep onto her clothes, shaking with happiness. Sorry, kid, it's not gonna happen. I'm sorry, Izuku, to you and your sister. He gripped at his chest, as he felt so relieved, so happy after what All Might had told him. I needed someone to tell me that. And then, the person I admire most in this world did. Honestly, part of me never thought I'd hear those words, much less from him. I don't know why I stopped admiring All Might as much as my brother. Maybe it was because I felt like I couldn't be like him without sacrificing Izuku's feelings in the process. Or it could have been my lack of bravery usually. 
but hearing it from him made me realize just a bit just how amazing he still is. He then held up his hands in front of the setting sun. I deem you worthy of my power. My quirk is yours to inherit, young man, he stated, causing them to flinch. Izuka slowly glanced back at him while Izuku looked up from her shoulder. Tears were still in his eyes and then he tilted his head in confusion. He had snot in his nose and he had white eyes. Izuka blinked rapidly as both of them were not following the man at all. Wait, what do you mean inherit? Izuku spoke up with drool falling from his mouth. Inherit what? Are we supposed to understand that means? Izuka tilted her head a bit. All Might recoiled his head back with a laugh. The two were utterly baffled from his reaction to the question. You should see your faces right now. Don't worry, I'm not gonna force this thing on you. He stepped forward to the duo, holding up a finger to the sky. Listen well, young children. This is his choice. Do you want to accept my awesome power or not? He bellowed while pointing right at Izuku, blood spurting from his mouth. Izuku's eyes were shaking, as he was still confused. Did he mean give Izuku his powers? But if so, how? Wh what is he talking about? What is this? Why is he acting like this is a casual thing? I've never heard of someone being able to inherit a quirk. Izuka's eyes twitched a bit from the man's blood. They watched as he wiped his mouth with his wrist. There are a couple of things you should know about my abilities. Izuku gasped sharply while looking up. Izuka blinked while staring at him, giving a sound of intrigue. Journalists always guess my quirk is super strength or some kind of invulnerability. Papers, interviews, and social media would always come up with the same kind of answer. When people ask in interviews, I always make a joke and dodge the question. That's because the world needs to believe that their symbol of peace is just a natural-born hero, like any of them. The two stared up in silence as their curiosity was peaking. They themselves as well associated his quirk as one or the other. And because of Izuku's high admiration, he never bothered to question it further. He was just amazed by his hero as a kid. But I'm not. There's nothing natural about my ability. He held up his arms above his head and then struck a pose while looking up to the sky. I wasn't born with this power. It's a sacred torch that was passed on to me from someone else. Izuku's eyes went wide as Izuku let out a small gasp. Someone gave you this quirk. No way, Izuku muttered as his sister turned to him. I didn't even know that was possible, she murmured to her brother. Yes way, and you're next. The wind blew All Might's shirt high up to show his injury. I can give you my abilities. Wait, hold on. Izuku got onto his knees, waving his hands. This is a lot to process. It's true that there's a lot of debate as to what your quirk actually is. Nobody's ever figured it out. It's one of the world's greatest mysteries. People are constantly talking about it online. But, well, the idea of passing on a quirk or inheriting it just doesn't make any sense to me. I've never heard anything like that before. Ooh. Izuka gave a small sweat drop staring at him. He was off monologuing again, like he usually did when thinking sometimes. Little brother, she asked him, but he didn't respond to her. Powers are supposed to be unique to each individual. I mean, since the first superpowers, no one's ever been able to just give someone else their power like a present. That's crazy. Words were flying around her and the blonde man, neither of them saying a word. If this is true, it would cause us to rethink everything we know about quirks to begin with. All bets are off the table. Ah, sounds like you're overthinking this whole inheriting thing, he commented and Izuku gave a nervous look, pressing her forefingers together. Stop nerding out. Izuku gasped in alarm while looking up. I I'm sorry about him. He does that a lot. She spoke up quietly while glancing up anxiously. And you don't seem used to interacting with other people besides your brother, huh? He pointed out and it felt like an arrow had just went through the side of her head. She sagged her shoulders with white eyes, tears falling from them. She's really shy, so she doesn't talk at a loud volume. Izuku gave an awkward laugh, rubbing the back of his neck. She can only do that with family. She had been like that since she was a child, so it was something that always stayed with her. You'll have to adjust your reality and accept this new truth. All Might declared to them. I can transfer my quirk to someone else, and that's just one facet of my secret abilities. A glow came from his hand, the middle white as rainbow beams emitted from it. His hair flew above his head. The true name of my power is one for all. One, four, all, the two murmured at the name. Yes, he informed as he started to explain the process. One person improves the power, then hands it off to another person. It continues to grow as it's passed along. It is this cultivated power that allows me to save those who are in need of a hero. The glow then stopped as he clenched his fist. The truth behind my strength. So that means, you'd inherit his quirk. Izuka turned to her brother in shock. All she wanted in life was to make sure she never used her own for her brother's sake. And now, this man was willingly offering him to give up his own. But why would you choose to give me a gift like that? Izuku wondered with a small frown. It wasn't like giving it to someone with a strong quirk wasn't an option. He just didn't know if he was truly worthy of All Might's power. When he had been seen as a weakling all his life by his peers. What if I can't live up to it? 
I was on a long hunt for a worthy successor, he informed the twins. And then, I watched you and your sister jump into action as the rest of us stood idly by. The two rushed forward to go save Katsuki. You may be just a quirkless fanboy, and your sister may be just a girl who has never wanted to use her quirk to save others. But you both tried to save that kid, and she had managed to use her quirk without hesitation. Izuka slid her left arm backwards while holding her crescent moon bow. A shooting star appeared and she pulled back, causing the sludge to dissipate after she fired. You acted like heroes. Izuku gave a small whimper at the praise, his eyes shaking as he looked up at the man. He tried not to cry, and the blonde man placed a hand on his head. Seriously, you gotta stop crying so much if you want my quirk. Come on, kid. Izuku, this is it. Izuka smiled happily for him, holding his shoulders. What you've wanted all along, and all because of what we did. Come on, answer him. He let out a shiver while continuing to cry. They've said so much to encourage me. He even told me the secret behind his powers. He shook his head rapidly, using his wrist to wipe his eyes. Is this? Is this what I've been waiting for all these years? How can I turn him down? He then stood up to face the blonde, giving a determined look. Okay, I'll do it. Yes, he answered confidently without question. No reluctance. The man grinned as Izuka gave a small proud smile towards her brother. That's exactly how I figured you'd respond. I'm so glad for you, Izuku, she told him with a soft tone in her voice. But, you have to promise me you'll use yours too. He glanced towards her and she blinked in confusion. All these years, you never used it because of me. Well, I don't want that, he gestured to himself. If I'm gonna do this, I want you to do it with me. I wanna see your amazing quirk more, Izuka, and for you to get better at using that power. Will you do that for me on this path of ours? Her eyes slowly widened at his request and then they softened. There were more than enough reasons as to why she never showed it to him once before today. But at the same time, that small part of her past self wanting to become a hero started to increase just a little more. She took a deep breath. It'd be a scary road for her, what with certain people now knowing the truth. But, she knew that with Izuku's wholehearted belief in her, she could do it. She could become a hero just like All Might said. All right, Izuku. She gave him a nod and smiled gently. I'll try my best. He gasped happily from her answer, glomping her into a hug. Thank you so much, big sister. I can't believe you're gonna work hard to become a hero like we've wanted. Ah, uh, Izuku, come on, she whined while looking away, embarrassed that he was doing this in front of All Might. We're in public. All Might stared at them with a small chuckle. By the way, young lady, would you tell me what your quirk and limit is? I've seen it myself, but I'd like to have more of an understanding of it. He spoke up, getting her attention. She blinked and took a deep breath. My quirk is called Galaxy. I can summon a bow shaped like the moon and fire a shooting star at a long distance. I can also apparently utilize components of the whole solar system, but why I don't know how exactly. Even if you don't know, that's still so cool. Izuku gushed towards his sister. She hummed and then gave a serious look. And my weakness. Well, when I told Izuku and my mom about me getting a quirk, I got examined. And the doctor said it was either like my arms will burn up and my muscles could explode from the inside like a real star burning out. Or, I could cause a huge explosion if I try to use my quirk while reaching my limit. All Might let out a small gasp from her explanation. Izuku gave her a deep frown. The doctor wasn't able to tell us which option could occur. She was still four at the time, so it was hard to tell. But apparently, she'll know her limit when her muscles start to burn up. I really hope it doesn't come to either. The blonde paused and then clenched a fist. After hearing that, he silently swore to help her control it so that she herself wouldn't get affected. Sure, he didn't know which answer was the right one until she was pushed that far. But for her sake, he wasn't gonna do that and risk her life in the process if it was the former option. Thank you for sharing that with me. I'll keep that in mind, young lady. He gave a small nod and she blinked from his dedication. She then gave him a small smile, Izuku humming happily. But it wasn't that simple. Receiving All Might's power turned out to be no easy task, as I'd soon find out. And actually getting control of my quirk wasn't a walk in the park, either, because that in of itself became much harder to understand. Two days later, the three were at Dagoba Municipal Beach Park, and early too, Izuku and Izuka were struggling in unison. Why? Because they were trying to pull a fridge while being tied to rope, with All Might in his muscled form sitting on top of it. Hey, 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 he called out to the two of them. It's pretty comfy up on this fridge. They were surrounded by all types of junk on the beach. How are you two doing down there? The two then fell in exhaustion as they couldn't move that thing an inch. Izuka had her hair in a high ponytail, wearing a pink sweatshirt and black sweatpants. People move these every day, you know, and most of them don't even have any super strength. Izuku looked up wearily as Izuka let out a small groan. All Might looked away with a big grin. Well, yeah, but there's an extra 600 pounds with you sitting on top of it, the boy pointed out to him. And... They at least have equipment to help them move it, Mr. All Might, Izuka glanced back at him tiredly. 
Nah, I've lost weight, so I'm down to 560 these days. He corrected and the girl twitched in disbelief, blue lines underneath her left eye. In this form, at least. The two gave sheepish chuckles from his explanation. The boy sighed while looking up at all of the piles of stuff around him. Great, much better. Why do you have us dragging trash across the beach? Anyway, he couldn't help but wonder. Yes, I failed to see what this has to do with my own quirk. Izuka fully sat up in confusion. He let out a laugh in response. Take a look at yourselves. He snapped photos of the two with his phone. He's not ready for my power. And you're not ready to be so used to your quirk you can use it without getting tired. Izuku yelped, tears flowing from his eyes. Izuka flinched with big white eyes, letting out an embarrassed squeal. But I thought you said that I was worthy. Her brother let out a scream while kneeling over, lines over his body. Am I really that weak that I can't even use my quirk without getting exhausted? Izuka let out a whine. I'm talking about your weak bodies. He corrected while stepping up to them. Izuku stopped screaming as the twins looked up at him in silence. My quirk, one for all, is a whole lot to handle. The combined physical abilities of everyone who's ever used it creates a hurricane of pure force. An unprepared body can't fully inherit it. Your arms and legs would shoot off if you tried to. Seriously? Izuku screeched in horror as Izuka covered her mouth, shaking in disgust. Thank goodness it hasn't come to that. She murmured in a bit of relief. As for your sister, an unused quirk can be dangerous if her body isn't trained enough to withstand it. The first time she used it, she was incredibly lucky. Her physical abilities as they are now cause her to become exhausted after only one use in periods of time. An unprepared body similarly can't control a quirk if it goes unused for over a decade like hers. If she continues to use it repeatedly, her body will eventually go into shock. Uh, Izuka looked away while shaking. T that's actually kinda terrifying. Izuku then shook his head rapidly to snap out of it. Okay, so this whole trash thing is really some kind of hardcore gym workout. And, you're our trainer. He looked up nervously, as he knew that this was gonna be even more brutal going down the line. You got it. All Might grinned widely with a thumbs up. And as her trainer, young lady, let me know at any point if you feel like you'll reach your limit. Why yes, Mr. All Might. I I won't let you down, she said gratefully while bowing her head. The man nodded sharply in agreement. But there's another reason, too, he walked up to the fridge. I did a little online research yesterday. Turns out this part of the beach used to be beautiful, but it's been a total mess for the last few years. He knocked his hand against the fridge. The two then stood up in realization. That's right. He took a look at the many items around them that had built up over the years. Because of the ocean currents, anything that's dropped in the water ends up here. People take advantage of that when they're illegally dumping their trash. Now all the locals avoid this place. A shame, too. I'd really love to paint this area one day. I've tried lots of times to do it with all the trash, but it's impossible, Izuka gave a small frown. All Might walked up to the fridge. Heroes these days are all about showing off and capturing flashy villains. He placed his hand on top of the appliance. Things were different before quirks, he then crushed it right in front of them. Service is what mattered. Both of them stared at him in bewilderment for his raw strength. And Izuku was to be inheriting this. Izuka just hoped that she wouldn't be expected to do that herself. Back then, heroes were those who helped the community, even if it was kinda boring. He then caused a giant wind after he was done crushing the refrigerator. You two will restore the coastline for this entire section of the beach. That is the first step on your paths, young children, he looked up at them. Towards being heroes, the two gasped as there were hundreds of pieces of things that they would have to move. And the refrigerator was the least of their problems now. Um, all this. Izuku turned back around as Izuka was trembling, her eyes white. That'll practically kill us. She whimpered a bit staring at it. But, there's so much. That's impossible. Izuku cried out and All Might stood up, hand on his hip. Young Midoriya's, you wanna go to Yue, right? He reminded the twins and they turned around. Well, yeah, of course. You went there. So it must be the best school around, right? Izuku pointed out with a hand on his chest. He gave a slight blush as well. It's a long shot. But still, I'm gonna shoot for the moon. Yue, I I wanna. At least try. Izuka stammered while clutching at her pants and looking towards the sand. I if it is really the best school as they say. Then I wanna uphold my promise to my brother. I, I don't know H how much else of not using my quirk will affect me. But, I I wanna remedy that by getting into Yue and M maybe prove myself. You've got a lot of spirit, fanboy. All Might commented and Izuku looked down a bit bashfully. And you have a lot of heart. Young lady, although you might want to work on your speech and volume, I can barely hear you sometimes. Ah, uh, she twitched in alarm, bowing her head. I am sorry, Mr. All Might. I'm still getting used to the fact that you're not a stranger anymore. She rubbed the back of her neck. I'm sure you'll adjust just fine. Izuku gave her a hopeful smile, leaning towards her ear. And to be honest, I'm still trying to get past that too. He then turned around, his back facing the duo. But, as I've mentioned before, heroing isn't easy to do without a quirk. 
They tilted their heads in confusion while staring at the man. It's not fair, but that's the reality. And UA is the hardest hero course to get into. So that means that I have to prepare my body for your quirk really fast. Izuku stepped up a bit nervously. And Izuka needs to get control of her so that she can properly use it. The girl then gasped in realization for his urgency. UAS exam is in 10 months. W will that really be enough time in order to reach the deadline? Izuka stammered a little in shock. Months could go by really quick. And if they didn't make significant progress by that time, it would take who knows how long to take the exam again. He then stepped up, holding a few papers. Not to worry, kids. I've got you covered, he assured the two. Izuka blinked at what he was holding, wondering what exactly it was. With the help of my handy aim to pass, American Dream Plan. Both of you follow this to the letter and the beach will be cleaned up just in time. It was a daily schedule of a routine that must be followed, for both weekdays and weekends. It included a meal plan as well. I also detailed every other aspect of your lives while I was at it. As so punctual, Izuka shook a bit in shock reading it. Izuku was a little put off as well. He had no idea All Might even did this sort of thing. Even our sleep is scheduled, he murmured, as he didn't know whether or not to be in awe or a little freaked out. And I have time slots just to paint. Izuka blinked rapidly at it. All Might leaned in towards the two, standing over them. I figured you'd want some time to yourself given your tendency to be overwhelmed being around me still. And I have to keep my promise of not pushing your limit for your own safety, so I gave you more breaks between your routine. But if I'm being honest, this is gonna be super hard. Think you're up to it. Izuku's hands shook a little. Yeah, sure I am. He gave a slightly nervous smile, but he understood the reasoning. We have to work way harder than anyone else to get in. So what choice do we have, right? You've already helped us so much that I have to pull my own weight as well. Izuka's eyes softened a little. My quirk will be hard to control because I don't know everything about it, but I want to go through with it to see what else I can do. All Might gave them a big smile, nodding in approval. Just like that, we began 10 months of absolute hell. Well, mostly for me since Izuka's quirk could practically kill her or anyone with range if she wasn't careful. All Might kept his promise of not pushing my limit, always letting me step aside when things got to be too much. It honestly felt a bit unfair, but I still tried my hardest when I could. The twins pulled a large file cabinet as much as they could. Come on, put your back into it, Midorias. All Might encouraged while waving a fist in his skinny form. It's not gonna move itself. Make sure you're watching your muscles, Izuka. The two then ran while holding tires. We're using different muscle groups depending on the size and shape of the trash we're hauling. Izuka waved her hand for a break, which he did give to her. All Might was standing on a pile, cheering them on. Let's go, let's go. The clock is ticking and ten months will be over before you know it. Izuku then tripped and fell. Izuka hit the ground knees first, panting as she sat on her legs behind her brother. Don't you give up. It's time to go beyond. Izuka, are you she held up a hand, signaling that she was okay. The two stood up and continued running. All Might smiled proudly at the girl at her hard work, despite her not knowing what could happen to her with her quirk. The two then had to go to school later that day. So you see, with the appearance of quirks, the building standards act in place had to be. The teacher was rambling off while Izuka was taking notes next to her brother. Both of them looked exhausted, but the girl powered on so that she could build her stamina. So tired, but we gotta focus. It'd be better if we could finish clean up a week before the exam. Izuku gripped his pen looking at his notebook of his menu from All Might. That means we've only got 294 days left. If we take recovery periods into account, assuming we'll be resting two days between each hard workout, then that gives me about 98 days of actual training. He muttered while tapping his finger against his mouth. Even at our most efficient, we can get in around 5 hours every morning and night, so that's 490 hours. Also, we'll need to make sure we're hitting every muscle group, which means we need to pay attention to the type of work we're doing on the beach every day. His muttering got the attention of everyone, including the teacher since he wasn't being quiet. We could start sneaking in extra workouts and lifting weights on our own, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. That would help us focus our workouts and isolate specific muscles. But it'll cost us time, lots of it. We'll have to cut back on the hours of sleep all might scheduled for us. But independent training could help us catch up a little bit more. Excellent. H how about you just start with paying attention in class? Izuka whispered, but he didn't hear it. The teacher extended his hand. Hey, Izuku Midoriya. He smacked the boy on the head, Izuku wincing to herself. He covered his mouth in shock as everyone looked at him teasingly except his sister. I know you and Izuku had a run-in with a villain, but pull yourself together, kid. Everyone started snickering at him. If you really want to get into UA, you might actually have to know something. He looked up ahead in embarrassment, as he had forgotten all about his studies he had to keep up with during this whole routine of theirs. Oh, right, I've got a study too. 
I am very sorry, sir. Izuka looked up meekly to him from her seat. My brother is G getting a bit too ahead of himself. Well, since you apologized, Izuka, I'll overlook it this time. You hear him. That's a girl with horns on her head smiled in amusement. Idiot. Katsuki was the only one not laughing, looking towards the window. He then glanced towards Izuka, seeing her power through her notes. She seemed very focused, too, as she was determined to keep her grades up while training. He stared at her for a few seconds and then scoffed, looking away from her. No matter how much studying she did, unless she fixed her quirk problem, she wouldn't get into UA. All might watch the twins running across the beach after school had ended. The two pushed a giant tire in unison, the blonde standing over them. He gestured with his arm to guide them more. Izuku then panted while running laps. Izuku was falling a bit behind as she came to a stop near All Might, panting with her hands on her knees. She could feel a slight burn from her left arm muscle, but she wasn't giving up. She would build her body. All Might was about to check up on her when she ran off again, managing to catch up to her brother. He blinked and then gave a small smile. The twins showed their mother their new diet, and once she made it for them, the two sat down to eat. Then they had to study afterwards. The two pushed some lockers together, grunting as they continued on. All Might showed them new adjustments to their routine before they left for school. Izuku then struggled to lift weights, Izuku coughing as she felt like the thing could crush her. The duo then did push-ups as much as they could. After that, Izuku was close to falling asleep, snot coming from his nose. He practically looked like a zombie trying to write notes. A few students stared at him anxiously. Izuku glanced at him and leaned forward, popping the snot bubble with her pencil. He yelped a bit in alarm as he woke up. Then she moved back, grabbing a pen instead. She then continued to take her notes, as at this point, she was used to the routine by now. That night, they scarfed down their food, their mother looking at them in a bit of concern. Izuku held out an empty bowl. Izuku let a small burp, putting a hand in front of her mouth sheepishly. The two ran towards the beach early the next morning, still pushing trash off the beach. The two panted and then Izuku felt bile going up his throat. He then threw up onto his sister's shoes, much to her dismay. All Might gave a small groan. Later that day, when it was almost closing time, Izuku gave a small pout as Izuku stood in the shoe store with her. She wanted to wait until there were less crowds, so she had to spend the rest of the day working out in socks. He forked over almost all of his allowance for new sneakers for his sister. All Might silently shook his head as the girl did not look amused whatsoever. In the rain, the two pushed a truck in the middle of the weather, and they weren't making much progress, either. The blonde watched and gave another groan at this. He then watched as the two did swimming exercises at the beach. A few girls peeked over and he posed as they admired the hero. Izuku was using barbells for his arms, Izuka doing the same in her room. The next morning, the two hauled off trash into the truck. Later at school, they used a hand tool to strengthen their arms while taking notes. Then the sun was starting to set as they both carried All Might on their shoulders, and managed to carry him, though just barely. Soon, it was fall, and the leaves were flying off the trees. The twins were holding things above their shoulders while running after All Might. He was following them on a small scooter. Izuka was panting but kept her eyes forward as she felt much stronger in terms of her body than she did before. Izuku, however, wasn't faring too well, and he felt like his eyesight was blurring. He couldn't keep up anymore and eventually fell to the ground. Izuku gasped as she and All Might looked back. Izuku, she ran up to her brother in alarm, dropping her item. The blonde let out a sigh. Hey, hey, kid, look alive now. You two have only got three months left. What, are you gonna give up after all this work? Wanna flush it all down the toilet and take it easy? I already cut your sister's brakes in half, so I haven't gone that far with her. He called out and Izuku gave a small frown. She knew he was right, but something about Izuku felt very off. Lately, his stamina wasn't great, and neither were his eating habits. And every time she'd ask, he'd insist he was fine. But this was convincing her that he wasn't. And it was true that All Might had slowly cut her brakes, because she had shown him that her body was starting to handle her quirk little by little. She still felt like she would reach her limit, but not nearly as enough as she did starting out and it was proof she was still following the routine, though now she couldn't say the same for Izuku. If he had been following it, he wouldn't be nearly as tired, and he'd be at her level by now. His body twitched as Izuku looked down at him in concern. All Might let out a gasp and he realized what was going on, especially since the girl wasn't reacting the same. You're overworked. The aim to pass, American dream plan was created with your bodies in mind. Even though they did differ between you two at the start, it was fine-tuned to ensure your progress was swift, but manageable. He then gave a slightly scary look. Which means, you haven't been sticking to it. Izuku gasped and then she glared down at the boy. Izuku, is that true? She asked slowly and carefully. He didn't answer, not even lifting his head up. You're overdoing things. That's gonna have the opposite effect of what we want. All Might scolded him. I have to work harder. 
he declared while clenching his fists, or I won't stand a chance against the other applicants. The two flinched in shock as he was shaking. I don't just want into UA, I want to excel. I want to see Izuka's power grow with her. I want to be like you. His hands twitched as he tried to force himself up. I want for myself and my sister to be the greatest heroes in the world. So I'll keep on trying until I've got what it takes to do that. Both Izuka and All Might gasped in surprise. I want people to see my fearless smile and feel safe and be just like you. Izuku smiled up at All Might before having seen his true form. Izuku, the girl murmured softly down at him as she could understand now why he did it. Yes, it was stupid and not a good call. But he was very determined and full of energy like he was before All Might had crushed his dreams at the start. Gotta hand it to the boy. He's given a lot of thought to the future, not just for himself, but for his big sister too. She shouldered so much just so he wouldn't feel upset seeing her use her own quirk. He then grew into his muscled form, holding up Izuku by the back of his sweatshirt. That fighting spirit's what I like about you, fanboy. It serves you well. And you, young lady, your compassion for others is admirable. Izuka blinked up at him in alarm. Huh, she murmured in disbelief. At this point, she had gotten used to being comfortable speaking to him at least. But she still used formalities with him, which he didn't seem to mind. I do get your concerns. That said, now's not the time to go and rush progress. Fear not. I can get you back on track. And make sure your sister's still following hers. By the looks of it, she is. Leave it to this old man to adjust your plan. Young lady, let me know if you want yours adjusted too. Might need to give you a break so you don't end up like him. He pointed to the boy and she gave a sweat drop. I think I'll be okay. She said sheepishly in response. You're not an old man, all might. Izuku replied weakly, earning a laugh in response. It was now February 26th as All Might got out of his car. And suddenly, it was the morning of the exam. As for the beach cleanup, he heard a scream from the twins, looking up to see them standing on the huge pile of trash. The sun was starting to rise as Izuka pumped her fist standing next to her brother. Izuku let out another scream to the sky, sweat dripping down their faces. All Might ran up to the staircase, some trash nearby him. Hey, hey, holy crap, kids, he murmured in disbelief as the entire beach was now back to its former glory. You even cleaned up outside the area I told you to. Seriously, there's not one speck of trash left on this beach. The waves rolled in as the sun set higher. Only a few minutes to spare. But you exceeded my expectations. He was then shaking in awe of the two. Holy, stinkin'. He turned into his muscle form with a big smile on his face. Super crap. Izuku was swaying around tiredly as they had worked nonstop to get the rest out, without any sleep either. The two started to fall only for All Might to swoop in and catch Izuku in his arms. Izuka fell over his shoulder and he held her in place. He then stood up, looking at them proudly. Excellent work, you too. Izuku looked up tiredly as Izuka was panting softly. We finished everything. All Might, we did it. Do you think we're ready now? Izuku murmured in exhaustion. Do you think my body is ready for my quirk? She muttered while trying to wake up. Yeah, you did good, kids. I gotta say. I'm impressed. He placed the two down gently, Izuku first. Once the girl was on the ground, she rubbed at her eye with her fist. I knew you had it in you, but this is beyond. Ha! <laughs> he stepped back and then held up his cell phone. Look at this. They silently looked up to see pictures of the two of them wailing. This was from the first day of training with All Might, and they didn't look very flattering. Um, it's you two crying ten months ago. He then took a good look at them. Look how far you've come. Such improvement. Izuku had grown a six-pack, while Izuka seemed a bit more muscular, but not enough to be over the top like her brother. At the very least, her stamina was much better, though she had no idea how long it would last for her limits with her quirk to show now. There's still a long road ahead of you both before he can inherit my full power set, and before she can really utilize her quirk's vast variety. But it's starting to look like you can do it. The two gave small smiles, looking at their hands. All might, do I deserve this? Are you sure? His hand was slightly shaking. You put so much time and energy into helping us. He sniffed, a few tears escaping him. How did I end up so lucky? Can I really do a lot with my quirk? There's so much I have to learn before I even get that far, Izuka stated a bit hesitantly, giving a teary-eyed smile. But you were patient with my limits and even allowed my body to adjust when you could have made it the same as my brother. Thank you so much, Mr. All Might. He laughed down at the two. Are you two really worried about that after all these months? He then patted the two on the back. It was the hard work of you both that did this, not mine. Now, for your reward, Izuku Midoriya. And yours as well, Izuka Midoriya. Yes, sir. Izuku sniffed and Izuka blinked. She wouldn't inherit one for all, and that was fine with her. She had her own power to master anyway. So what would even be her reward? I'll start with Izuka. You mentioned wanting to paint this beach, but couldn't before because of the trash. Well, he dug into his jacket, and to her amazement, pulled out a small easel along with some paintbrushes and bottles of paint. 
It's not much, and I imagine you have the necessary colors needed. I didn't know if I got them all, but you earned your chance, Izuka Midoriya. Her hands twitched as she thought she was dreaming while reaching out to the supplies. I, I can really paint the beach. She murmured happily while taking them into her hands. Izuku gave her a small smile as she beamed slowly. Thank you, Mr. All Might. You'll be the first one to see it when it's done, I promise. Looking forward to it. He nodded at her and she hugged the easel with a happy smile. Izuku gave a small chuckle. He hadn't seen his sister this happy in a long time ever since having her quirk. All Might plucked a hair from his head, holding it up. Someone told me this once. There's a difference between being lucky and deserving. One's an accident, the other a reward. Never get the two confused. Izuku gasped in anticipation. Take that to heart, young children. This gift, Izuku. You earned it with your own valiant efforts. Izuku looked up at him teary-eyed as they both waited. And then the boy gave a look of determination. And so, I held out my weak, quirkless hands and grabbed the future. And I watched my brother, proudly, as he would finally take the first step to becoming a hero. All Might held out the hair to the boy. Eat this, he simply stated, to their shock. Huh, uh. Izuka looked at him with small eyes, her mouth open a little. She then sweated immensely at this, giving a nervous sound. Run that by us again. For him to inherit my power, he's gotta swallow some of my DNA. That's how it works. He informed and she blinked incredibly. This isn't exactly how I imagined it. The boy exclaimed in disbelief. Come on, there's no time. You'll both be late for the exam. Eat, eat, eat. He urged, Izuku screaming in horror. We have to get going. Little brother, eat the hair please. Izuka urged him while pumping her fists. Why are you acting so encouraging about something like this? He screeched at her. Later, at 8.40 a.m., UA stood on its proud grounds as it would be the location of the exam. Lots of students from all different middle schools were arriving for their chance, wearing winter clothing. Izuku ran up with Izuka clutching at his backpack with one hand. While she may be used to all might, crowds were a different story. We made it just in time. Izuku panted out and Izuka sighed in relief. Thank goodness, she said quietly enough for him to hear. Both of them slowly stepped forward, looking up towards the entrance. Izuka had on a knit cap over her head and a white scarf around her neck. We were so worried about missing the exam that we didn't have a chance to test out our new powers. He glanced back at his sister. Well, more so mine since yours aren't technically new. He gave a sheepish smile. New to everyone else, yes, but not to her. All Might held up the single hair in front of Izuku. Eat this, he simply stated, to their shock. Izuku had a hand in front of his mouth at the memory. It was not something he wanted to relive ever again. I may have swallowed the hair, but I don't feel like anything great has happened to me yet. Remember what All Might said. His sister whispered into his ear. Stupid Deku and Mousy, a familiar voice growled out before she could remind him, getting their attention. Izuku let out a small gasp as he glanced back to see Katsuki approaching. Kakin, he gritted his teeth at them, angry as usual. Get out of my way now before I set you two on fire. He threatened and Izuku yelped, recoiling back. Izuka just hid behind her brother with an annoyed frown towards him. Oh hey, G morning. Um, let's just both do our best out there, okay? Izuku waved his arms around as Katsuki walked right past them. Good luck. The blonde boy didn't respond at all to them. He simply looked back at Izuka. She was looking away and he scoffed at the girl in silence. Izuku just stared up ahead. He was surprised that Katsuki wasn't bullying them or even trying to hurt them in any way. I think that's the kid who withstood the sludge villain. His name's Bakugo, right? And look, I think just right past him was that girl who tried to save him. Midoriya, I think. One of the students glanced back and Izuka blinked at the fact that they said her name. Yeah, he's the real deal. And that girl is really something, huh? Another one commented, the girl blinking in shock. Ever since that day, Kakin's been taking it easier on me. Izuka, not as much. I sometimes catch him giving her intense looks. Izuku then let out a sigh of relief, dropping his shoulders. I guess I was just scared out of habit. He then shook his head rapidly, looking down towards his sister. But hey, they were talking about you. He nudged her a little happily. It's good that some people think you're strong enough already. That might make things worse when I'm taking the exam. She gave him a small sweat drop. That meant people might be watching her, and she did not like that foreboding feeling at all. And we're not defenseless anymore. He pumped a fist in front of her, looking up towards UAS logo. Yeah, we have to remember all the work we've put in. His legs were shaking a little, though. Thanks to All Might. We're actually going to be heroes. He stepped forward with her in tow. And then he tripped over his sneakers. Or I'll just die. Ah. Uh, Izuka reached out a hand to stop him and he did. However, he couldn't really feel Izuka's arm anywhere. That was because he was stopped in midair before he could fall, with a brunette-haired girl standing nearby. She gave a small chuckle. Are you okay? The girl wondered and Izuka yelped, hiding behind one of the statues nearby. She looked up ahead at her brother, giving a look of awe. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. Izuku screamed while moving his legs around rapidly as he was still floating. 
The girl then helped him up, pressing her hands together with a small smile. I stopped you with my quirk. I'm sorry I didn't ask first, but I figured you wouldn't mind me catching you. He stared at her wide-eyed, blush on his cheeks. She then looked up with a big smile. Isn't this all, like, way nerve-wracking? Uh, I, uh, he stammered, unable to form a sentence. Izuka gripped at her skirt, looking around anxiously. TT. She couldn't speak either, though mainly because of her shyness around new people. Well, guess I'll see you inside. Bye. And I'm sorry again for scaring you. She waved to Izuka as she left, the girl staring after her. Izuku was too and he then blushed as he realized what just happened. Holy well, I just talked to a girl. Well, other than my sister. He didn't really even say a proper sentence to her, though. He let out a few happy laughs while walking back to Izuka. He turned around so she could grab his backpack and she stared at him, blinking rapidly. Are you sick? She murmured to herself in confusion, before actually taking the exam. They all had to go to orientation first. There was a room reserved just for this event. The lights on stage turned on one by one, revealing a hero by himself. What's up, UA candidates? Thanks for tuning in to me, your school DJ. He then waved his arms with a big smile. Come on, and let me hear ya. He held up his hand to his ear, and no one was saying a word. He shrugged it off, keeping it mellow. Ha, huh, that's fine, I'll skip straight to the main show. Let's talk about how this practical exam's gonna go down, okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Once again, complete silence. Izuku was fanboying looking at the man on stage. However, oh my goodness, it's the voice hero, present Mike. So cool. He gushed with sparkles around him. Unfortunately, Izuka was sitting between him and Katsuki. She had her hoodie above her head, sweating immensely as she was shaking in her seat. I listen to his radio show every day of the week. It's so crazy nuts that all the UA teachers are pro heroes. Will you shut up? Katsuki grumbled a bit, glancing to the girl. Boy, and stop shaking, you're making me want to vomit. She flinched in alarm from being addressed and frowned with a small whine. She wished she could switch seats, but her brother was too busy fanboying that she couldn't ask. Like your application said, today you rockin' boys and girls will be out there conducting 10-minute mock battles in super hip urban settings. The screen flipped around to start showing a graph of sort. Gird your loins, my friends. After I drop the mic here, you'll head to your specified battle center, sound good. All of them looked at their papers to find out which one they'd be assigned to. And still, there was silence in the room. Okay, I see. Katsuki spoke up, alarming both twins by how calm he sounded. They're splitting us up so we can't work with any of our friends. Yeah, you're right, Izuku murmured as he looked past his sister. He was in Battle Center B, and so was Izuka. Katsuki was in Battle Center Our examinee numbers are one after the other, but were assigned to different battle centers. Get your eyes off my card, Katsuki growled and the boy yelped again. Izuka slid her hoodie down further, sinking in her seat a little. Damn, I was really looking forward to crushing the both of you. Izuka let out a sigh of relief to herself that he wouldn't be in their area, though she had no doubt he'd pass. Okay, okay, let's check out your targets. Present Mike gestured to the screen behind him, which showed silhouettes of robots. There are three types of faux villains in every battle center. You'll earn points based on their level of difficulty, so better choose wisely. Your goal in this trial is to use your quirk to raise your score by shredding these faux villains like a mid-song guitar solo. But, check it. Make sure you're keeping things heroic. Attacking other examinees is a UA no-no, ya -no, dick. Izuka looked even more relieved, so even if Katsuki was in their battle center, he wouldn't be able to fight them. Excuse me, sir. A student stood up in the middle of the room, raising his hand. But I have a question. Hit me. A spotlight shined on the boy who pointed to the printouts everyone was given so that they'd know which faux villain was associated with how many points. On the printout, you've listed four types of villains, not three. With all respect, if this is an error on official UA materials, it is shameful. We are exemplary students. We expect the best from Japan's most notable school. A mistake such as this won't do. Izuka's eyes widened that he was openly scolding present Mike over something like this, and then he turned around to the twins, pointing right at them. Additionally, you with the unkempt hair and the girl trying to hide. Huh. Izuku pointed at himself as Izuka flinched in alarm next to him. He's been muttering this entire time. And her attempts to cover herself up are a disgrace. Stop that, both of you. If you can't bother to take this seriously, leave. You're distracting the rest of us. While she's being disrespectful to the faculty and those who are all properly showing their faces in this school with no issue. Additionally, the cover of your outer garment should not be visible inside a building, only outside. Sorry, Izuku murmured while covering his mouth in embarrassment. Izuku let out a whine while slowly moving her hoodie away from her hair. She then adjusted it in silence, Katsuki glancing at her. He then looked towards the boy with a small huff that she didn't pay attention to. All right, all right. Present Mike waved his hands to try and keep the peace. Examinee number 7111. Thanks for calling in with your request. 
The fourth villain type is worth zero points. That guy's just an obstacle we'll be throwing in your way. There's one in every battle center. Think of it as a hurdle you should try to avoid. It's not that it can't be beaten, but there's kinda no point. I recommend my listeners try to ignore it and focus on the ones top in the charts. The one still underneath the spotlight then bowed. Thank you very much. Please, continue. He silently sat back down. Oh, I get it. So they're kinda like traps you have to get by in games. One of the examinees commented to someone next to him. The whole thing's like a video game, huh? That's all I got for you today. I'll sign off with a little present. A sample of our school motto. As General Napoleon Bonaparte once laid down, a true hero is one who overcomes life's misfortunes. MMHM. Now that's a tasty soundbite. You're ready to go beyond. Present Mike then held out his arms. Let's hear a plus ultra. The words appeared on the screen, and he got no response. Izuku was shaking looking at the paper in front of him. Good luck. Hope you practiced hitting more than just books. The twins stood in front of the battle center where they'd be testing. A bus had taken them and other people there as well. And the battle centers were in good distance of each other, so no one could sneak out. Well, this is it. Time to put ten months of training with All Might to the test. Izuku was wearing a teal jumpsuit while Izuku had her hair tied up. She had on a midnight blue jumpsuit herself. Time to give it my all. Izuka and I will become heroes, just like I always dreamed. Inside, he was shaking like a leaf because he didn't want to fail. I won't let myself or her down. He then reached up to slap his cheeks to snap himself out of it. Izuka placed a hand on her chest nervously, letting out a shaky breath she didn't know she was holding. She then clenched her fist silently in determination. She would pass the exam today, and she would work hard while doing it. The hallowed grounds of UA. The school with the best hero training course in the world. The place every kid wants to go. It's known as Japan's most respectable hero school, and the reputation is extremely high around the entire world. People walk through the entrance for the exam. Sure, there are similar programs out there, but they don't hold a candle to UAS, which is why it's almost impossible to get in. Some of the world's most famous heroes have graduated from UA, including All Might himself. So, no surprise on why my brother wanted to go here so bad. The school's alumni list is a who's who of idols. All Might, the most famous pro there is. The legendary peacekeeper, with the most wins under his belt. The fiery hero, Endeavor. Not to mention the denim-clad, award-winning Marvel, best genist. At first, I didn't want to come to UA at all. I thought it was better to not put Izuku of watching me enroll. Not to mention, my quirk itself isn't the best refined. But thanks to my brother, he convinced me to take the exam along with him. Graduating from UA is basically a requirement if you want to be a great hero. And so, we held our heads high and marched towards the entrance exams. This was it. The first step towards achieving my dream of both of us becoming pros. With hesitant but determined looks, the twins stepped forward through the doors, ready for their exam. And so, after being assigned to battle centers, the students looked at the huge area in front of them. It was like an entire city, but condensed. This is nuts, one of the examinees commented in disbelief. It's like a whole city, another said in awe. Can you imagine how much it cost to build this? A third one asked. Meanwhile Izuku was shaking like a leaf. Izuku herself wasn't much better either. Hiwe is amazing. Like your application said. Today you rock boys and girls will be out there conducting 10 minute mock battles in super hip urban setting. The screen flipped around to start showing a graph of sorts. Okay, okay, let's check out your targets. There are three types of faux villains in every battle center. You'll earn points based on their level of difficulty, so better choose wisely. Your goal in this trial is to use your quirk to raise your score by shredding these faux villains like a mid-song guitar solo. Izuku gulped after reminding himself of the instructions that they were all given. Izuku placed a hand on her chest nervously, letting out a shaky breath she didn't know she was holding. Okay, this is it, he spoke up and she glanced at her brother. A mock battle, he then glanced around at other examinees, and noticed that none of them were feeling the same as the twins. How come none of these guys seem nervous at all? Are they that confident? Though, some of them even have special gear. We may not have special equipment or enough strength as others. Izuka spoke while hiding behind him. But I know we'll pass. This is our only shot. She clenched a fist in front of her. He glanced behind his back. Thanks for the pep talk, but uh, kinda weird to have it when you're standing behind me. He gave a slightly awkward expression. Because I don't want other people coming up and talking to me. She covered her eyes with one hand. Even if it is a smaller amount than before, I can't bring myself to show me to them. She shook a little in fear. You can't hide behind me the entire exam, though, he sweat dropped a little. Otherwise you won't earn points. I all earned them. She pumped her fists rapidly with sparkles around her head. You and Mr. All might help me so much, so I I don't want to disappoint. He blinked rapidly and then smiled at his sister. You won't, Izuka, because you've got this. He encouraged the girl and she nodded sharply with a determined hum. I I do, she affirmed nervously, but wasn't going to back down easily. 
He chuckled from her shy enthusiasm and then looked up ahead. He could see the back of the brunette that kept him from falling earlier. Uh, hey, it's her. The nice girl we met at the school gates, he pointed out and his sister peeked behind his shoulder to see her. The one who kept me from falling. Izuka blinked as she watched her brother nervously step up, sweat on his face. We should probably thank her for helping me back there. Izuku, she whined a bit at having to interact, because she wouldn't be able to form a sentence. She did think the girl was friendly, but the thought of speaking to her was making Izuka very anxious. Before she could do anything, a hand stopped Izuku by placing it on his shoulder. He turned around in confusion, Izuka turning to her left. They both saw the boy that spoke harshly to them earlier and yelped. Izuka darted to her brother's back, shaking. He's here too, not him again. What's he gonna say to us now? Izuka squeezed her eyes shut in fear. She looks like she's trying to focus on the trials ahead. He spoke up to the twins, watching the brunette take a deep breath. He then glared down at the two. What are you going to do? Distract her and ruin her chances to succeed. No, no, no. Izuku waved his hands rapidly. Of course not. I. Hey, over there. Two students were watching from afar. That's the guy who almost bit it out front earlier. He practically wet himself in the lecture hall. Another examinee pointed at Izuku. Dude, what a loser. But one less rival to worry about, I guess. He's out. The others thought in unison. The taller intimidating boy was glaring down at them. Izuku gave a small frown as Izuka gave a sweat drop, her teeth chattering. Why do I feel like everyone's already written us off? An examinee flinched upon seeing Izuka hiding. And the taller boy noticed her. Excuse me, young lady, you would do best to show yourself during this exam. It can be seen as rude to others if you attempt to hide from them. My suggestion to you is to reevaluate what you aim to do here. He scolded the girl and she flinched in alarm, as she didn't mean it like that. Izuku stammered while waving his arms. She's just very shy. Well, hey, isn't that the girl who tried to save that kid with the sludge villain? A boy pointed at her, and she didn't notice the crowd eyeing her. Is that really her? She seemed so different during the attack. One of them squinted for a good look. I guess while she does seem very powerful, she's way too afraid to actually do anything with it. Another one I don't have to worry about. Right, let's start. Present Mike announced, getting their attention as they looked up towards a tower. Get moving. There are no countdowns in real battles. Run, 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 listeners. He spun his arm around, as he was standing on the roof. You're wasting airtime here. Izuku gave a confused sound, and suddenly no one was around them anymore. They turned around, looking on in disbelief as everyone was running for it. Both of them gave baffled looks at the other examinees. We're already behind. The twins thought in unison. Crap, Izuku gulped before they took off. Hey, wait up. Save some villains for us. He cried out behind the crowd, but no one was listening. They were falling very behind, wondering what to do. Just calm down. This is fine. We have plenty of time. We'll catch up to them. After all, I've got All Might's power in me. Izuku gulped after having swallowed the hair. He whimpered a bit as the feeling was very weird to him. Izuku gave a semi-awkward laugh at him. Both of them were already dressed in their outfits for the exam. Good. You swallowed it, yes. All Might asked the boy, standing in front of them. He looked at his hands in confusion. Yeah, but I don't feel like anything's different yet, he commented, Izuka walking around while eyeing him. He doesn't look any different either, she murmured, earning a laugh from All Might. Well, of course not. Your body has to process the hair first, he explained, humming while looking at the clock nearby. It was currently 6.15 am it should kick in after two, maybe three hours. Izuku sighed a little. My stomach's in knots, and we still need to shower and eat something before the exam, he pointed out, All Might turning to them. Izuka was hugging her stomach a little, her eyes squeezed shut. Now that you mention it, I'm not feeling so hot either. She murmured a bit quietly, taking a deep breath to try and calm her nerves. The two put on their backpacks, All Might with his back turned to them. You may have molded your body into a proper vessel, and Izuka may have adjusted her body enough to withstand her quirk. He started off to the two, but you did it in a hurry, so be cautious the both of you. You haven't even taken them for a test drive yet. The physical backlash of one for all can be intense. Huh? Izuku stared at him with wide eyes as Izuka let out a small gasp. There's no time to go into the fine details, but he then turned back to the twins. Take note. The two panted running side by side. You've got to prepare yourself before using your quirks. So I want you to clench your butt cheeks and yell this from the depths of your heart. Sma a giant robot suddenly smashed through the wall in front of them, causing the two of them to stop. Izuka gasped sharply as they looked towards it with wide eyes. Well, a one-pointer. He recognized it from the spreadsheet they were given earlier. Another one suddenly appeared from the sky, landing behind Izuka. She turned around in rapid succession, sliding her fingers across her right arm to make her bow appear. Target acquired. The one-point robots looked at the twins, commencing attack. They raced forward as the two stood back to back. Well, gotta dodge them. Izuku's legs were shaking as he couldn't move, though. 
He was trembling in fear looking at the robots. Why won't my feet move? The robots then loomed over him, Izuka glancing around to form an idea or something. And yes, she was still terrified, but she had to push through like Izuku said earlier to her. Holy crap, we're gonna die. He squeezed his eyes shut, tears falling from his eyes. Izuka linked her arm around his and he glanced at her in confusion. She then jumped up as high as she could, pulling back her arm as the shooting star formed. She pulled back and fired at the robot she was facing, defeating it as it exploded once the shooting star impacted it. Suddenly, the other robot's eyes flashed and she glanced back while falling. Both of their eyes widened as it was about to fire right at them. Oh no, can't move away in time. Izuka gritted her teeth looking back at the robot. Then there was a flash coming from a laser, defeating the robot easily. Got him. A boy with a belt called out and they glanced back in alarm. Izuka landed safely as they watched a blonde looking dressed up, his arms behind his back casually. A laser. Izuka yelped and hid behind her brother, noticing that the belt was around his belly button. Is, is that where he fires it? Merci Bokup. He smirked towards the two. We make a great team with you as my decoys. Although, I doubt I'll be seeing too much of you in the future, he winked at them, sparkles coming from his fingers. And I must say, your quirk is tres magnifique. He pointed at Izuka, who blinked rapidly. He then took off at a fast speed. Adieu. What did he mean by that? Izuku wondered a bit nervously. We have to get more points, remember? Izuka gave a sheepish expression. To say that his words left no effect on them was an understatement. Oh, right. Thanks for saving me, Izuka. He gave her a grateful smile. You were incredible back there. HM. She then looked away, rubbing her neck. I don't know if I'd call it that. I guess it was the same feeling I had when we were trying to save Bakugo-san. She blinked at the comparison and then huffed, looking annoyed. There was a thought that she never wanted to have again. Huh. Izuku stared at his sister's expression. Her eyes were closed and she didn't look too pleased now. He knew that look, she only had it when Katsuki was present. Hey, why do you think Kaken hates you so much? She looked up in shock from the question, her eyes opening as she glanced at him. We're in the middle of an exam, remember? And why did you bring him up? I know, but it's just kinda weird the way he looks at you sometimes. It's like he's analyzing you or something when he stares at you for too long. Even though he couldn't care less about us, he muttered that last part to himself. She then turned back around so her back was facing him. Truth be told, she didn't know what Katsuki's deal was with her. If it was because of her brother, sure, but he reacted differently to her sometimes now. But she also honestly couldn't almost care because of his behavior, no matter how curious it made her. She did know one thing, she didn't want her brother getting mixed up in it if things got to be too much. Izuku, don't worry about me, okay? She gave a small smile looking over her shoulder. If it's something bothering him about me, I'll have a talk with him. She looked a bit scared at the idea and he looked at her in concern. But Izuka 6 minutes and 2 seconds left. Present Mike informed everyone, alarming the two. Already, Izuka yelped with white eyes. They then ran down the street past the destroyed robot. Not good, not good, not good. The boy thought to himself, and unfortunately, all they were coming across were defeated robots, which wouldn't count if they didn't take them down themselves. We need points, fast. Up ahead were some two-point robots, which were also destroyed. He panted heavily as they passed through an alley. They then flinched at the sight in front of them, seeing a whole bunch of examinees in front of destroyed robots. Izuka hid behind her brother once again and he looked around rapidly. He then gasped as he saw the brunette running towards something. Her again. She seemed so focused and determined. Izuka stared at the girl. Just like I wanna be. They watched her touching robots with a pink glow coming from her fingertips. The robots floated into the air and then she pressed her fingers together. Now, release. She called out, and all the robots fell into pieces behind her. Izuka blinked in awe of the girl's power. The brunette then glanced behind her, doing a quick glance of what type of robots they were. Okay, that should be at least 28 points. She ran off, Izuku looking in shock. 28 points. The boy who scolded them took off in high speed thanks to the engines in his calves. A robot looked up as he jumped and went into high speed to kick the robot into pieces. That puts me at 45. How'd he get so many? Izuku cried out in disbelief, and one kicked a robot arm into the air. 32 for me. Hey, back off, that one's mine. As they all argued over getting a spot into UA, the twins looked around rapidly. It was all chaos, and so far, only Izuka got one point. First come, first serve. They looked panicked that they might not pass it the way things were going. How were they supposed to get in if they couldn't get any more chances to prove it? At this rate, there won't be any enemies left. We're gonna fail. What do we do? Izuka murmured while darting her eyes around. Nothing was coming to mind for either of them as they both gave small sweat drops. Clearly, the examinees have no idea how many villains are present, or their locations. Someone spoke up in front of a bunch of screens. The faculty of UA were currently watching the progress of the examinees. They have limited time, must cover a vast area, and hunt down every last target. 
some use information gathering abilities to plan out strategies. A tall boy with multiple arms was scoping out the area from a roof, while others rely on speed to pull ahead of their peers. The boy who scolded the twins slid to a stop, dust and smoke flying behind him. Then the boy with the belly button laser fired again, giving a wink. Of course, remaining calm under pressure can be a huge advantage. Katsuki was panting hard with a big smile on his face as he had just taken down a whole area of robots. As can pure power and combat ability, the most successful students use a combination of all these tactics. They're the ones who rack up the highest scores. HM, I'd say this year's group looks promising. A female teacher spoke up. Well, there's still plenty of time before it's over, another teacher stated as a cover lifted from the control panel to reveal a button. The real test has yet to come. The button was then pushed. Let's see how they react. Suddenly, there was a shake from the ground and a huge explosion went off, giving off a bunch of smoke. The brunette girl covered her mouth while looking up ahead with a gasp. Other examinees stopped to look and see what was going on. She panted in a bit of fear as something so big was approaching that it broke the windows nearby. The twins looked around in alarm and then looked up as a large shadow went over them. The two gasped sharply as they were staring at a giant robot that was taller than even the buildings surrounding them. It smashed the top half of the building to the left. Think of it as a hurdle you should try to avoid. I recommend my listeners try to ignore it and focus on the ones topping the charts. Izuku let out a scared squeal as Izuka stepped back a bit, still holding onto her crescent moonbow. Her mouth didn't want a close looking at the giant robot. Isn't this a little extreme? Izuku couldn't help but think. All of this just to get into UA. They definitely weren't expecting this. This is something that some of the most famous heroes had to go through when they took their entrance exams. So how will we handle it? Izuka bit her lip anxiously, sweat dripping down her face. The robot raised an incoming fist, causing another explosion. All of the examinees screamed while bracing themselves from the amount of wind the robot was giving them. Izuku stood in front of his sister as she ducked, covering her head with her arms. Once the smoke let up, they looked up with a terrified expression on their faces. Izuku panted heavily as he felt like he couldn't move. Izuku looked up at him, seeing his shaking body. Izuku, she reached out a hand, and he fell at her feet. Little brother, she bent down to him from behind, about to pull him up. Now things get interesting. She looked up, flinching as the both of them could see shadows in the distance. Most of the examinees had stuck to running off, fear on their faces. Izuku was still looking up, not having said anything to his sister. Izuku cried out to him while shaking him from behind to try and snap him out of it. A person's true character is revealed when they're faced with danger. The boy with the engines on his calves noticed the twins while running past them. He noticed their expressions briefly and didn't stop. And neither did anyone else as they went past the two to go earn more points. This is a disaster. We've got to run and find some smaller villains. The green-haired boy turned around, trying to crawl away as fast as possible. Crap, crap, crap. I'm still at zero points while Izuka's got only one. Izuka quickly got onto her feet, knowing that if they didn't fight anyone else, then they'd fail the entrance exam. She then bent down to her brother, helping him up quickly and trying to run as fast as she could. Less than two minutes remaining, present Mike's voice boomed from his spot. What? Izuku looked up with tears in his eyes while Izuka gasped, coming to a stop. Two minutes. The two pulled a large file cabinet as much as they could. Everything All Might did for us. The two then ran while holding tires. All that training. All Might caught Izuku in his arms, while also holding Izuku over his shoulder after they had passed out. It'll be wasted. We can't let that happen. Izuka's eyes were shaking in fear. Izuku had tears in his eyes. My brother and All Might have pushed me to work so hard to get here. I can't just let them down by not earning any more points. That's the only way I'll be able to repay them for being so patient with me over my quirk. Oh, someone cried out. And it was a familiar voice too. Izuka flinched, as did her brother. They slowly turned around, seeing a pile of rubble once the smoke was cleared. Not only was the person trapped underneath the rubble, her leg was injured. She grunted in pain while gritting her teeth trying to break out. And not only that, the girl was the same one they had met outside not too long ago. I'm sorry I didn't ask first. I figured you wouldn't mind me catching you. She smiled with her hands pressed together. Izuka was peeking at her from a statue. They looked up ahead in horror as things started falling. Not a single other person was around to help her. And they couldn't just ignore her either. The twins took off running towards her. There are no combat points rewarded for taking on the humongous villain. The two raced as fast as they could. But there is. Opportunity. As Izuku bent down his feet, he felt some of his muscles being elevated in strength. But Izuka, as she bent down, she felt sparkles underneath her feet as something was rising underneath her. A chance to shine. They were both powering up and once they did, a yellow star appeared underneath Izuka's feet to propel her into the air. Izuku jumped up, red light underneath his shoes. The brunette girl gasped sharply while looking up at the two. To show what you're really made of. 
Izuku narrowed her eyes while adjusting her bow, pointing it right at the robot. Izuku clenched a fist, red veins appearing on it as he prepared himself. His sleeve then started to rip into pieces while his sister raised her left hand, sliding it down her right wrist slowly. Her ammo started to grow stronger from the slower movement once she gripped the string. The robot tried to attack, but they dodged and continued flying right towards it. So clench your butt cheeks, kid. The two recalled All Might saying to them, with tears flying from their eyes. They knew that this might fail them, but they had to do something to save the girl. And yell this from the depths of your heart. The twins thought along in unison to what they were told earlier that day. Izuka focused her aim. Her arm pulled back far enough that her hand was right next to her cheek. Smash. Izuku thought with gritted teeth at the same time that Izuka fired off her shooting star. Only this time, it was much bigger than the last one. It soared right past her brother, twinkling with power just as Izuku recoiled back his fist. At the same time the shooting star hit the robot. He had punched it with so much power that it not only caused a dent, but the robot was pushed back far. This was thanks to the power of both twins working together. The shooting star then shined inside of the robot, causing an explosion from within. The brunette girl looked up with her mouth wide open, as did the other examinees watching. All Might gave a grin to himself. That's right. Show who you are. The robot then endured smaller explosions throughout its build. Embody what it means to be a hero. A staff member waved his arms in excitement while All Might's grin widened, proud of them both. Nothing is nobler than self-sacrifice. Izuku looked up ahead in awe of his own power and his sister's. They were still falling as his arm looked completely broken with how red most of it was. Izuka blinked rapidly, not only at the fact that she flew, but that her shooting stars could apparently explode. The twins rushed forward to save Katsuki. This is, kind of like when we tried to save Kaken. We moved without thinking. He clawed at the sludge as much as he could. Izuka tried to pull at it. She then fired off her shooting star arrow, causing the sludge at her target to dissipate as the star continued towards the sky. The two were still in shock while flying in the air. But now I have a quirk. And Izuka's been learning with it. Real power. The robot fell to the ground on its back as present Mike pointed to the both of them. Just one minute left. He announced and the two gasped, snapping out of it. They then started to fall at a high speed, since they had nothing to land with. Both of them screamed as they headed for the ground, the wind blowing rapidly around them. Izuka then saw her brother's injuries. Izuku, she shouted in concern for him, looking over his arm. Are you okay? No, he replied back quickly and her eyes widened. But don't focus on me right now. Okay, I jumped using one for all, and I used my quirk at my feet to get distance. Izuka looked for something, anything to help them out here. So, maybe we can use our quirks to get down too. Both of them thought in unison, just like All Might. Landing should be a piece of cake, right? Izuku wondered while he couldn't move his right arm anymore. Or his legs, they felt like putty. Right, 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 right. If I use my quirk to get us down, it won't be a smooth landing Izuka gritted her teeth and thought. If she tried using her shooting star, they'd probably die because she had only used a big one like today only once. So she had no idea if it would be the same result. So unfortunately, she couldn't risk that. Her brother yelped as he glanced at his body. I'm broken. Izuka looked at him wide-eyed, unsure of what to do. Either she risked their lives to get them down, or they'd die. The two of them screamed as the girl braced herself. Both of them had their eyes squeezed shut. You may have molded your body into proper vessel, and Izuka may have adjusted her body enough to withstand her quirk, but you did it in a hurry, so be cautious the both of you. The physical backlash of one for all can be intense. Izuku squeezed his eyes shut while holding his arm, tears flying from his eyes. He warned me. I should have listened. He gritted his teeth trying to fight the pain off, but it was difficult, especially when about half of his body was in serious damage. I can barely contain this borrowed power. Even after ten months of training, it felt like glass breaking for him. And this is just a hair of his quirk. All Might held up the hair standing in front of the two. I got way ahead of myself attacking that giant villain. Izuka turned to her little brother as their tears flew above their heads. I should have warned Izuku to be careful. She looked towards the ground, her hair flying above her body. I can't get us down. I'd probably kill us if I did. Even after intense training, I still can't get control of it. And this is after inheriting one. But we couldn't just let that girl to suffer. We had to do something to help. But how are we gonna get out of this? I'm acting like a pro. When I don't even have enough skill to be a psychic. This is it. I'm sorry, Izuku and All Might. I failed you. Izuka let out a deep breath as they were nearing the ground, both of them determined. The girl shook her head rapidly to snap out of it. No, this isn't over. There's gotta be something we can do. A Detroit smash. It's the only chance we've got to survive. My legs and my right arm are broken, so just one option. I can do this. But if my timing's off, then we're toast. Even if we live, we don't have enough points. Izuku looked up towards his sister. Izuka, grab onto my back. Okay. 
He told her and she recoiled back in shock. I'm gonna use a Detroit smash to get us down. No, you can't do that. She exclaimed while looking at his flailing legs and right arm. Your body might not be able to handle it again. If I can activate the same technique I used to jump, maybe I can get us down. And what if you can't? He looked back to her and she stared at him in realization, her eyes shaking. I trusted you when you fired off your quirk for the first time with Kakin. And now I'm asking you to trust me. Izuka let out a small gasp as there was now silence between the two. The wind kept blowing in their hair and she closed her mouth silently. He was right. She had to trust him, as much as she didn't like it. Because she did have faith in her brother, even if they did end up failing today. Okay. She agreed after a few more seconds, hugging his waist from behind. He glared towards the ground. But if I break my left arm too, there's no way we're gonna pass the exam. Izuku thought as he didn't have the heart to tell her that. They were getting closer and closer to the paved roads. Izuku was screaming as Izuka looked towards the ground, her eyes wide in worry. But she didn't let go, instead her hold only got tighter, just before he could use his arm. The girl that the twins saved lightly slapped his cheek and he floated just above the ground. Izuka held on tight as the brunette slowly pressed her fingers together. And release, she groaned as they all fell safely. Izuka landed with a slight thump next to her brother, letting go of him while letting out a heavy breath. The brunette groaned and then looked sick. She covered her mouth with her hands and tried to hold it in. But unfortunately, she still threw up onto the ground despite that. The twins panted heavily. Izuku holding onto his broken arm. We're alive. That girl, she stopped my fall again, and now Izuka's too. Sure seemed to take a lot out of her. Izuka hid behind her brother still, but glanced up towards the girl. Maybe she's hit her limit with her quirk. But at least she doesn't look injured. That's a relief. Izuka gasped and then turned to her brother. Izuku, only your left arm can move. Let me help you now. She picked him up over her shoulder, stumbling a bit because she was still shorter than her brother. He clenched a determined fist. Thanks to her, we still have a chance. To get at least one point before and that's it. Present Mike interrupted, his sunglasses giving off a small glint. Time's up. An alarm went off as Izuka's eyes went white as she stood stiff. The boy with glasses let out a small breath. Katsuki smirked while wiping off his mouth, smoke coming from his hand. The brunette girl let out a small groan as she looked unconscious. The other examinees stood in silence, most of them proud of themselves. Izuka then slowly dropped her brother back onto the ground, both of them horrified. Tears fell from their eyes, snot coming from Izuka's nose as they gave sounds of disappointment. Izuku then rolled his eyes backwards before falling onto the ground and losing consciousness. Izuku. Izuka bent down to him, sniffing. I'm so sorry. I only managed to get a single point. He didn't answer as his face was planted into the ground. Did you see their attacks? One of them looked on at the twins. Izuka was shaking her brother, wailing. I didn't think they had that kind of strength. Me either. Some of the examinees had gathered around the twins to stare at them. Izuka either didn't notice or she was busy trying to get her brother awake to care. Looked like some kind of reinforcement type quirk in an emitter quirk, but there was something else about them. If they have such amazing quirks, how come he didn't snag any points all day while she only got one? Maybe they were trying to trick all of us. Joke's on them. There's no way they're passing with low scores like that. True, but you gotta admit, those were pretty amazing moves. As they were speaking, the boy with glasses looked on at the duo, his glasses glinting a little. He felt that there was something that needed to be addressed here. They're all missing the point. Don't they see what they did? He then looked towards the brunette, who had collapsed on top of the robot part she was laying on. They sacrificed everything. Just to save that girl. He looked back to the twins, Izuka checking her brother's pulse. They must have known how little time was left, how many points they needed to pass, but they were putting their lives on the line. But despite those concerns, they didn't hesitate to jump. When the twins had jumped to go face off the robot, the boy had actually seen them do this with his own eyes. He then clenched a fist, as he felt like he had misjudged them both a little much. And when he passed by them before, he remembered seeing their faces. They couldn't move at all earlier and yet didn't have any fears jumping in to help the girl. If this hadn't been an exam, he then stood up straight, gritting his teeth with pride while clenching a fist. Then, of course, I would have done the same thing. The only reason why he didn't was because he didn't actually see the girl until after the fact. He then froze a bit as another thought came to him. Wait, the exam, the judges. He placed a finger underneath his chin and thought. They saw that. Footsteps then approached them from behind. Very nice, good work all around. A female voice spoke up to them. She was short and using a cane to walk. Your heroes in my eyes. Every one of them, she gave them a sweet smile. Here, reward yourselves. She placed some gummy bears into one of the examinee's hands. Have some gummies. Oh, uh, thanks. The examinee in front of her stammered as Izuka glanced over her shoulder, having stopped freaking out for now. She blinked in confusion at the woman. The girl didn't see her near the entrance of the battle center or the lecture hall, so the girl couldn't help but wonder who she was or if she worked at UA. 
Yes, yes. Don't eat them all at once, okay? She shrugged it off while walking past him. Thank you. He murmured in confusion, everyone just staring. The blonde boy with the laser hummed and then pointed at her, giving a wink. That mademoiselle, she's the heart of UA, he stated as she was approaching the twins. Izuka flinched in alarm as it came to her who she was, and she was now very embarrassed for not realizing it sooner. She released her brother and moved away, sweating nervously as she was just now realizing the staring people, and she wanted to hide underneath the bed so much right now. Oh my goodness, she examined Izuku quickly. You were hurt this badly by your own quirk, Sonny. Why yes, he was. Izuka bowed her head respectfully. We were both saving this girl. And then his quirk overpowered him. It's as though his body isn't used to handling his own power at all. But the young lady seems to be fine, if not concerned for him. He please, help my brother. Izuka pleaded softly with the woman, who stared at her in silence as the girl didn't look up. His quirk is something he still has to learn how to limit himself with. H he won't be able to become a hero like this. So please. She puckered up her lips and then kissed the back of his head. Izuka yelped a bit in alarm, her hair standing on end. Give me some sugar, she said in a cute voice. Um, what's she doing? One of the examinees asked in confusion from behind the blonde. You're watching a school nurse in action, the blonde informed with a wink. The school nurse then stood up with a smile, as if she hadn't kissed him on the head. The youthful heroine, recovery girl. Izuka turned to her brother and then opened her mouth in shock. His right arm started to glow green, sparkles coming from it. Her quirk is a Trez awesome boost of healing power. His arms slowly started to heal, along with his legs. She's the only reason Yue can hold these reckless exams. Look, she's saving him months of recovery time. Izuka let out a happy gasp as she saw that her brother could move his arm and legs. All right, he'll be fine now, recovery girl informed everyone. Izuka nervously looked up at the woman. T thank you, MMS, recovery girl, she said while shaking anxiously. Oh, no need to thank me, sweetheart, recovery girl gave a small smile. It's my job. Anyone else injured? The boy with glasses recoiled back a bit. I wonder, what if the exam has other parameters I didn't take into account? He then let out a light gasp looking at the twins again. A school staff such as UA wouldn't ignore powers like the two had showcased to save someone. And even so, there had to be other factors in the exam, such as maybe bravery or how they used intel, or how well they made decisions. It's possible. One week later at their apartment, the twins were having dinner, which consisted of fish heads. Izuka lightly poked at hers, not liking the way it was just looking at her. Izuku, Izuka, their mother asked as they both held up a piece with wide eyes. It was honestly kinda creeping them out as they gave nervous smiles. Izuka had her hair tied up into pigtail buns, her bangs still around her face. She was wearing a silk white pajama tank top and pink pajama pants that had purple swirls and leaves painted onto them. And she was also wearing a pink robe over her body. Snap out of it. Izuku, Izuka, their mother called out. And this finally got their attention. They looked up at her, and her eyes were wide staring at her children. Why are you two smiling at that fish? Should I be worried about either of you? Oh, sorry, no. Izuku answered quickly and Izuka put down her fish with a small sigh. We just spaced out for a minute. Sorry if we worried you. The girl gave a small smile and her brother started scarfing down his rice. MMHM and co-examined them closely with her eyes, blinking. They seemed to be doing okay, but something just felt off about them. Izuka started to help her mom do the dishes. Izuku sat on the couch, his eyes wide. He wasn't even watching TV. Based on our own estimates, we barely passed the written part of the exam. Not that it really matters, since we ended up with not enough points in the mock battle. Not a single point for me. He silently used his hand tool to work his right hand. And ever since the exam, we haven't been able to get in touch with All Might. He gave a frown as he held his phone tightly in the other hand. Not that it made a difference whether or not he'd get a call from him. Inko floated a book over to her hand. Izuku let out a sigh, getting the attention of the woman. She gave a small knowing smile. I know. Waiting for the results is terrible. She spoke up as Izuka wiped her hands. She had her phone in her back pocket. I guess. Izuku agreed tiredly. He felt like he wouldn't be able to function until he heard something, anything from either UA or All Might. It is kinda nerve-wracking. Izuka bit her lip nervously, sighing. She took out a sketchbook as she walked over to sit next to her brother. It could go either way, really. She murmured while opening it up, deciding to draw and try to ease her nerves a bit. And she never thought she'd be so concerned over her results until the past week thanks to her brother giving her some confidence in her quirk. No matter what, I just want you two to know I'm proud of you and I think you're really cool, sweeties. And Ko gave an anxious smile, hoping that they would hear back soon. Sure, Izuku said after a few seconds. Thanks, mom. Izuku let out a heavy sigh, closing her eyes. And Ko then took off her shoes at the door. We didn't tell our mom about All Might or his secret. The woman bent down to pick up something. The twins continued to sit on the couch. 
We want him to continue being the symbol of peace for everyone, the number one hero. Besides, he trusted us, so we'll keep our mouths shut. Even if we did tell her, All Might wouldn't be too happy. There's a reason why he told us, we just happened to see him to transform back. Izuku looked at a sketch she drew of herself, All Might, and Izuku training. Besides, Mom might worry a bit too much about how Izuku likes to push himself with his quirk. He had already broken an arm and two legs just from the mock battles alone. Izuku silently put down his phone, picking up a barbell. Izuku glanced at him as he lifted it. All Might, somehow, some way, you saw potential in us. But we failed. I let the three of us down so much. I'm sorry. He had a pained look in his eyes, as maybe that was why he hadn't heard from All Might. He didn't want to face Izuku after learning of his failure. But I'll keep trying. Izuku, his sister spoke up, causing him to turn to her. Her eyes were kept focused on her sketch. We have to give it some more time. I'm sure that whatever the results say, all we can do is try even harder, right? She then looked to him with a small smile. So just be patient. Yeah, okay, he agreed with a weak smile of his own. Thanks. As soon as she said this, the door opened. Izuka yelped loudly while slamming her sketchbook shut. They looked up to see their mother scrambling on the ground holding two envelopes. A letter, you two. They came, you two, look. You have letters. She held up the envelopes to them. They're here. Your test results from UA. The twins stared at them with wide eyes. The moment was finally here. And Ko gave a nervous sound. Pacing in front of their rooms, with Izuka's room right next to Izuku's on the left, she was praying that the results were positive. Izuka slowly approached her desk, her hands shaking. She had a bookshelf full of art supplies and books next to her desk in the upper right corner, with some of her favorite paintings on display. Above her headboard from her bed was a few pictures of her with her family, as well as some wall designs she painted. Above her bed was a window, and she also had a small shelf next to her door for her tools that she always used for her art. She gulped while slowly taking a seat. Izuku was sitting in front of his desk, staring at the envelope in front of him. He then mustered up the courage to grab it, Izuka pumping a fist as she grabbed her own. They then ripped them open at the same time, and a device fell onto their desk. It lit up, and showed a projection of All Might in his muscled form. He was also wearing a yellow suit. Booyah, I am here as a projection now, he announced, causing him to yelp. Izuka opened up the door behind him, blinking at the projection. Oh, so it's not just me. Thank goodness, she murmured as she thought she was going crazy, closing the door behind her. Wait, all might, Izuku exclaimed as Izuka approached him from behind. He looked between the letter and the projection. But this is from, Yue, isn't it? He asked in confusion. I know it's been a while, but with great power comes a great amount of paperwork. He then let out a cough. Bowing his head, my apologies, young man. The truth is, I didn't come to this city just to fight villains. You're looking at the newest UA faculty member. Both of them gasped sharply from the news they had just learned. You're seriously going to be working at UA. Izuku murmured in shock. You're gonna be teaching students there. Izuka blinked slowly at the projection. All Might nodded, only for a hand to gesture to him from the side. Huh, yes, what's the matter? Who's showboating? Oh, sorry, I'll wrap it up, but I have to show him something first. Wait, I have to do how many of these things? Izuka gave an awkward look, lines over her forehead as an eyebrow twitched. He didn't realize he'd have to address every single person who passed in these videos. Huh. He sighed in exasperation. Right, so, moving on, he then cleared his throat and the two gulped. Even though you and your sister passed the written test, you got zero combat points in the practical exam. Sorry, I know that. Izuku murmured as Izuka gave a small frown. She placed a comforting hand on his back. Of course, I know, his voice broke a little, shaking. It's all I've thought about. As he was trembling, he gripped his pants tight into his fists. His lip quivered as he tried not to burst out crying. I'm a failure. He whimpered out to his sister and Izuka closed her eyes. She didn't bother getting her own device. By that criteria, she already knew she failed as well. Fortunately, there were other factors, All Might spoke up after a few seconds, and they slowly looked up after hearing this. But before we get to that, I have another surprise. Here, look. He pointed a remote at a screen nearby. A short clip for your viewing pleasure. He turned it on, and the girl that they saved appeared. This was filmed after the practical exam. Um, do you have a sec? She wondered with a small frown. Sorry to interrupt. The two gasped as they recognized her. It's that nice girl, the one who saved us in the exam. Izuka stated in a bit of awe, though wondered why they were being shown this. She showed up after the exam to talk about you and your sister, young man, All Might informed, confusing the both of them. What did she have to say? You'll have to stay tuned to find out. I think he's becoming present Mike a little too much. Izuka gave an awkward sweat drop. All Might then presumed the video feed. You know that boy with the really messy hair and all the freckles? And then the short girl with thick green hair and freckles. It's hard to describe their faces. 
He's kinda plain looking, but the girl looks like a puppy with how she acts. Uh, they don't really stand out or anything, you know. She described to present Mike. She means us. Izuku flinched in realization. I look like a puppy. Izuka tilted her head in confusion. She couldn't really see it herself. But she also had no idea if she was meant to take that as an insult or not. I was wondering, would it be possible to give them some of the points I earned in the exam? The brunette girl asked, to their shock. I heard him say something about wanting to get just one point in, which just seems crazy. And while she doesn't seem like she talks much, I know that she was trying her hardest. How could two people who took down that huge villain all by themselves not have any points in the end? Then they were reminded of what Katsuki said back in middle school. You'd never be able to hang with the best of the best. They both would have had better scores if they hadn't stopped to help me, the girl pleaded with present Mike. There was absolutely no reason for you to put yourselves in danger like that. Even if she had a quirk that we didn't know about, she's still not a pro hero. Izuku then clenched a fist, Izuka staring at the video wide-eyed. They both saved me. The girl squeezed her eyes shut. I have to make it up to them. They let out light gasps that she went out of her way to do this for people she didn't even know. Just because they had saved her. And she didn't even talk to them after the exam, so they thought that she just maybe didn't remember. Please, sir. Izuku then slowly got onto his feet. Can't you just... Give them my points. The video paused there. All Might's back facing the twins as he was watching. You have a quirk now, yes. And your sister is still learning to control her own. But it's your actions and Izuka's drive that inspire others. The two then gave small smiles, glancing to each other. Izuku glanced towards the ground, feeling proud of himself. Similarly, Izuka felt the same way, but also very grateful to the girl. She wished she could properly thank her for saving them. And that's why I am here. You see, the practical exam was not graded on combat alone. The two gasped while looking up. It, it wasn't. Izuka murmured in a bit of hope. Then the video continued on. Thanks for showing up to the station with your request. Present Mike started off. But there's no reason to give either of them your points. He patted the girl on the head. The kids are charting well on their own. All Might then stepped in front of the video. How could a hero course reject someone who is committed to saving others, no matter the consequences to themselves? He then glanced at the twins with a big smile. After all, that is what makes a hero. The two couldn't keep their mouths closed listening to him. And that's what my alma mater is all about. Training those who would risk their lives for the greater good. The two then gasped as they saw a display of Izuku's points for the exam. Izuka flinched and ran off to go get her own projection, which was still playing in her room. What is it, Izuka? Inko wondered just as Izuka slid to a stop, as hers had stopped playing, so Inko still didn't know yet. We'll explain in a minute. She then came running back in, placing it next to her brothers in a panic. So, we have rescue points. A panel of judges watches, and they award points for heroic acts beyond just fighting villains. Izuku Midoriya, 60 rescue points. Izuku Midoriya, 65 rescue points. There was an extra 5 points as the principal liked your flair. The other projection then explained, to their utter shock. Their eyes were shaking looking at their results. Inachako Yuraka, 45 rescue points. And that was the name of the girl who just tried to give them her own points. All Might then glanced back, the big smile still on his face. You all passed the exam. Uh, Izuku stammered as Izuka shed a happy tear. Is this some kind of joke? No, no, it's not. She held his shoulders from behind, bouncing up and down a bit. We really passed. All Might then held out his hand. Welcome, Izuku. Izuka, the two projections stated in unison. Tears came to Izuku's eyes finally, as they were both being able to attend the high school that would get them to their dreams. You have made it. You're now part of the Hero Academia. Izuku let out a whimper and let out a shaky breath. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. All Might. Izuku clasped her hands together happily, a small smile on her face as her tears started falling. Izuku sniffed while wiping off his eyes with his arm. It took a lot of help, but our lives have changed completely. And now, we're enrolling in the high school of our dreams. It took me a lot of convincing to get me this far, but I don't regret it. My life was changing for the better. And now we would both get to attend UA, the school that was known for graduating some of the most famous heroes in the world. And Ko kept pacing outside of Izuku's room, as they hadn't come out yet. Finally, the door opened and she gasped, seeing their happy smiles. She gasped and tears came to her eyes. Oh, my babies. She cried out for them, 